Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You don't have to know history, you don't have to know wrestling, you don't have to know matches. My belly's just a little big, my eye is just a little big, but brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. There is no revolution. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if, if they piss somebody, if they took somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Hello everyone and welcome to this very special episode of the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast where we do talk about a hell of a lot of wrestling shows, one of which we attended live. Oh yes, that happened this week. It's that show, ladies and gentlemen. My name as always, until I decide I don't like it anymore, but it's a damn fine name, so I'm not going to change it. It is Turbo Tony. And I'm here... A man of whom I have spent a lot of time on this podcast with, who I attended the show with as well, my partner in crime, a man who is great friends with Terry Tibbs. It's Matt Marsander. Talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, not Terry Tibbs. It's quite funny that I know that only one other person will understand what the fuck I just said. So there is that. You have 86,000 Ugandan dollars. That, that's right, that's right. For for people wondering what we're going on about, it was a running joke while I was over. If you don't know, just Google phone jacker and you will come up for you there. So, Matt, I kind of don't think I need to ask you how you are because I saw a lot of you this week. Yeah, I was going to say. So you should know how I'm holding out at the moment. <laughs> are you are you depressed that I left at all? Is that, is that uh, how you... Saddened, but then when you left, I played load of Fallout, so I was happy again. Oh, well, I don't know how to take that, really, to be honest. Oh, so easily remedied. I thought you would be in fits of depression. <laughs> so simply replaced. Yeah, so easily, so easily. Uh, of course, guys, this is going to be a <clears throat> um, a very unique episode. We're going to be reviewing a lot of wrestling shows. We had initially said we weren't going to review Raw, and then well, what happened on Raw, we were like, okay, one of us at very least needs to review Raw. So <laughs> um, the way that the format of this show is going to go, we're going to review uh, TLC, which happened on the Sunday. Uh, So I'm going to review that. Matt's going to review Raw, which happened on the Monday. And then we're both going to review NXT that we attended live at the SSC Arena. Wembley, London, which was quite the fun escapade. And we're going to talk quite quite in depth about what it was like to be there live and obviously the show as a whole. Because I I went back and rewatched it. Did you rewatch it, Matt? Uh... Takeover, I haven't, no. no. Well, you've had your time. We, we... I, I've, yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've watched some. Yeah. I can't say I've watched a lot of. Yeah, we watched a couple of matches together just after the show to see how it came out on TV. And uh, yes, uh, the, the, the chance, they definitely didn't blank them out, shall we say. We'll, 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 we'll obviously go into that. Uh, Baron Corbin could explain the reasons why that was the case. <laughs> now we were heartless bastards. It is, it is, it is. Um, so Matt, if they want to follow us on Twitter, what is the Twitter handle? Of uh, at Talk Wrestle Pod. That is it. You can also interact with us via our Facebook page, which is Facebook dot com let, uh, slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. On there, you can have seen uh, some. Uh, some pictures put up there, like for instance, for some reason, TNA getting advertisement on the building that NXT Takeover had. So that yeah, was, that was odd, oddly enough, that was fun on there. And Matt, I don't know if you know this, but our very own uh, Rob Frampton was there at the show. I've I've seen this. Yeah. Um. Now obviously, we were there rocking our shirts, but with ten thousand people, we weren't exactly easy to find. But it's a shame we actually weren't that far away. He actually put up a, a picture of where he was at the show. And we weren't that far away for, from him. So, um, but regardless, it would have been awesome to, to, to meet up with anyone. Next time, next time, Matt, we do this. We make sure in advance that other people are going. And if so, we can at the very least, you know, maybe get a big group picture or something like that. That's it. You know? um, there's us feeling like a big deal. Uh, before we get on to the, the rest of the show there, Matt, we've got plenty to talk about. Lots of wrestling to review. More so than probably any other episode we're going to do uh in the near future. It is almost the end of the year. Uh, Matt, this is actually technically our Christmas episode, if you will. Um, I guess it would be. That, that we would be doing this. Um, so, Happy Christmas, uh, or Merry Christmas, or Happy Holidays. I, I still think that's stupid, but still, 
that we're not exactly here talking about that. But um, I hope you guys have a great time. And uh, Santa brings you everything that you want, of course. I still believe in Santa. Why not? You know, do you believe in Santa, Matt? Uh, no. No? No? You blasphemous no. son I'm of a, a bitch. That's it. I'm a blasphemous heathen. Ah, oh, dearie me. I'm sorry. Just don't know, don't know, don't know if we if we can get over this impasse here on the show. <laughs> but still, uh, what we want to talk about a little bit quickly is what we're planning to do from here on out for maybe every single end of year for the show going forward. Um, and it's something that we want to talk about going forward. Uh, me and Matt talked about it a little bit. But basically what we're going to be doing is that myself and Matt, for everyone that doesn't know, every now and then we'll go through and we'll hash through the analytics of the channel and that sort of thing. Yeah. In terms of how we can grow, how we've been growing, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what we want to do is that we want to do an end of year meeting for Let's Talk Wrestling. And while that was always going to be in the cards, it's along the lines that now we actually want to make the show more transparent. We actually want you guys um, to be able to give us feedback on the fly of some of the things that we're going to be talking about. And even possibly have one of you guys, maybe one of the guys that um, has been a long-term listener of the show, um, uh, one of the, the, the supporters of the show, um, you know, obviously quite mature and uh, able to, to speak confidently, who would actually be on this call with us um, to give feedback on some of the things that we're going to be talking about. So almost be like a, uh, what's, what's the name of it, like... Um, you know, like the spokesperson, if you will, of our fans to give us relationship. The background. representative. Represent. That's a, probably a better word. Um, obviously, if no one really what fancies going on to that, then that's fine. What we're basically planning on doing is essentially when we do this call, which will probably be about an hour long, when we, myself and Matt, we go through everything that's happened this year, all the ideas we have going forward, uh, covering a wide, wide, a wide array of uh, different subjects. Um, it's going to be live. We're going to actually be doing that show live for you guys. It's not a show, really. It's just a hash out. It's going to be quite informal. Uh, and that way you can give us um, feedback on the fly. It's, it's going to stay on the channel, so you can go back and listen to it if you miss it. But it's basically giving you an inkling of some of the things that we're thinking of going forward with the channel in terms of expansion and, and you know going down the lines and, and ideas we may have for the future. Um, so if anyone's interested in filling that void... Technically, it'd be the first time we've had someone on the show, if you like to call it that way. So, if if you feel like doing that, then you know, leave it in the comments. I'll get in contact, and um, who knows, you might get picked to come on and be the, the fan representative for us, and that way we can have a good back and forth in regards to that. But, <clears throat> um, that's something that, Matt, I, I think that you and me would like to do each year at the end of the year, just to kind of get a roundup of where, where we are, where we want to go, that sort of thing. Yeah, it'd be good to do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's in place. That, that's something that you can probably expect happening. Maybe not. Maybe not in the next couple of weeks. Maybe the beginning of next year. But it is happening soon, and we'll let you know. Probably on the Facebook page and on the Twitter if that's going to happen, or you just might see it just pop up in your subscriber box that we're broadcasting live, and that's what it's for. So there we go. Uh, without you, Matt, I procrastinated further with that uh, end of year meeting that we've got planned to do. Um, let's talk about some wrestling. I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's a good chance to. We've only got a little bit of news this week, and it happens to revolve around Lucha Underground. Oh, yes. Now, last week Glory. we said <laughs> that the, were, there was a release for the a new season. We, we got the date that's going to be released. And just after we had said that, recorded, shipped out the episode, the trailer for season two launched. Um, and obviously we put this up on the Facebook page and all that lot. So that was all, of, of, that was awesome. The, the trailer's awesome. If you're excited about Lucha Underground, this would be everything that you want it to be. Matt, how many times have you watched that trailer? I'm quite easily dozen. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm probably getting close to that myself, to be honest. It's going to be badass. It's going to be... if, if, if what we've seen so Especially far... Especially considering like, I go through my, my YouTube and I see, like, oh, El Rey Network. No, oh, I've got two minutes. <laughs> it's... I, obviously, this is the, that was the video that pro, that confirmed that Rey Mysterio is going to be one of the guys in New Channel Underground this year, yeah. which is going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. Mysterio's still got it, you know. 
and um, it would be good to see him sort of unleashed considering all the situation he had in WWE for all those years where he was just basically backstage just waiting for someone to say, you know what, you, you can kind of wrestle, can't you? So go do something. Yeah. Um, but they kept forgetting about him as much as he wanted to get out of his contract, get back in, hear conflicting reports. I feel felt kind of bad because I think he got stuck with the um, the Botchkara stigma. Yeah, to be honest, that, that whole was the only, that was the, that was the oh, yeah exactly that was like the only reason Ray was still around, mm. and then it's like oh he's so terrible. Often, often sometimes any advice I could give to people going into any sort of wrestling company, if you're associated with someone, you act like a penis. It's not just your own career that you're putting in detriment. Sometimes it'll be people like the the people that you're working with. So, um, but uh, talking of penises, Matt, oh I've got more news around Lucha Underground. Jerry Ryan has signed with Lucha Underground. The penis is entering the temple. And now you may know, Matt, Jerry Ryan as being the man with the iron penis. The man who had that clip of him doing the show of strength. You might have seen it. Oh, know, in, of course. In Japan. Um, Do you know what the worst part is? I've also saw rumours that he's apparently signed with you, Paul. <laughs> it's just like, oh, God. Not rumours, Matt. I've seen a video of him confirming that he's signed with you, Paul. Oh, God. He's not going to be doing porn. Or, you know, as far as I know, anyway, could lease that. But um, apparently he's just like a, an ambassador for them. So good for him. <laughs> sure. Um, but the guy's getting tons of exposure over that one video about him doing a test of strength with his dick. And it, you know what? It, it's kind of working out for the guy. So fair play to him. But Matt, when you've got such masculinity as Prince Puma and Mil Muertes... They must be shaking in their boots with the man or with the iron penis coming to, to Lucha Underground. That is true. And who could beat this guy? You could low blow him. You could low blow him and break your fucking arm. <laughs> yeah, like my forearm. Yeah, shattered. Yeah, you try. You could try to. Uh, if Undertaker tried <clears throat> to kick this man in the dick, Undertaker would be injured. That's just the way it is. Yeah, he wouldn't make it. He wouldn't make it through a match with Jerry Ryan if he tried to pull that shit. So. The man with the iron penis. That's what I'm calling him from now on. Uh, of course. He's hard, Matt, and he's ready to go. The he, man with the iron junk. Yep. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's, 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 he's throbbing and he's, he's getting ready. And he's gonna, he's gonna get right in there. Right in that deep, dark cave of Lucha Underground. Yeah. This, this show already went a little bit low, Brown. Yeah, I was gonna say, you, yeah. you, you, you done. Yeah, well, but, well, you know this show. Well, I, I could, I could do it for hours, man. You know that, that is very true. You know that. But yeah, I thought this is quite fun. I, this You're might done add... poking around for innuendos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This might add a little bit of a comedy edge to Lucha Underground, which I'm certainly not against if they can pull it off. You know. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, either way, I think it's going to be fun. So that's okay. Um, so. That's all the news, really, because of all the, the uh, shows going on this week. Any other news really was kind of subsidiary. It wasn't really... Uh, yeah. It wasn't really uh, important important enough, really, to validate a lengthy conversation about. <laughs> Bailey will be our girl. That's <laughs> yeah, news. That's in news. That'll do it. Um, because we asked her a lot. You may have heard that. A lot. Uh, so this leads straight into our fan feedback. And once we've done our fan feedback, we're going to review those three shows back to back to back, which will be the the the, the crux of this week's show, I imagine. Uh, first of all, Alex from Wrestling Boom, which is that he'd gone to NXT Live. If they go on tour, then he's definitely going. I wanted to put this in. It wasn't so much a question, but yeah, if, uh, I tell you what, if you get the chance to do it, I would snap it up very quickly because one of the things I said to Matt while we were over is that it's an atmosphere that you won't find that much in wrestling anymore, especially associated to WWE. You know, you go to a That's local true. show and it'll be that heated, but to pack out Wembley Arena with that sort of atmosphere, it just ain't going to happen that often. So, you know, um, I mean, like I saw loads of people sort of compare that it was actually you know the crowd that made the show. Mm. Well, it certainly helps. I'm not going to take it, uh, you know, I'm not going to take all the glory. <laughs> we the can't take all the know. credit. Ah. Um, <clears throat> it certainly helps. It was, it was basically like, I saw Simon Vice comparing it. It was just like, like the English crowd remembered that it was supposed to be fun. Yeah. You know, because NXT by large is fun, right? It's, uh, 
they gave us the platform to be excited in the first that's place, it. you know, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So honestly, if you if you get the chance, it's money well spent. Um, it'll be something you remember forever. And um, in retrospect, I think me and myself and Matt would have been far happier paying a lot more for the tickets that we got. Oh yeah. Did. So um, yeah, it was um, great fun. Great. Great, uh, great laugh, and you're around people that just care and love as much, uh, love wrestling as much as you do. When we went to Raw, and we said that before, we went to Raw earlier on this year around about April, or was it April? Yeah, May? It would been, it would, yeah, it would have been April because it's um, it's it was after Mania. Revenge, yeah, it's Mania Revenge tour. Yeah, so when we went there, not saying that 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 crowd was still good, obviously not as good as the NXT crowd that we went to. Yeah, but the um, that crowd, while it was good, you could still spot people there that wouldn't normally go to an NXT yeah. show. Like we were sat next to three people that stared at their phones for the majority of the show. Trust me, no one in that building was staring at their phone for the for the entire <laughs> show. <laughs> no, you know, in NXT. So um, that's the big difference. So while you're still going to get a really good crowd at Raw, you just can't get anything like a crowd that you get at um, at this, uh, this at sort NXT. Of NXT show. Yeah, well, it's just the sort of thing. It's like you know, people are die hard for NXT because they've like the, the stupidest thing where we had someone in like a rep come along. It's like, hi there, do you have the network? It's like, really? Yeah, we said that was a bit stupid, wasn't it? It was the fact that they were they were like selling the network, and it's like you do understand you can only watch NXT through the network. I'm pretty sure that everyone here has the network, you know, so either that or they're not going to get it and they're just using it. They're fucking torrenting it or something. I don't know, but along those lines, but either way, you're not, you're not going to get them to get the network anyway. So yeah, um, it was kind of weird that this nice, attractive woman came over talking to us. And I was like, what, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> you don't look like you belong here. Like, <laughs> you sell the network. It's like, oh. oh, suddenly it makes sense. Suddenly it makes sense. Well, we've got lots of stories to talk about NXT once we yeah. get to there. We, it's, it's already coming out of us. This this question wasn't even regarding that. We're just going out. Oh, <laughs> I cannot say that we can. Um, we're not going to go way off track over the course of this show. It probably will. I cannot promise that we will not procrastinate. Yeah. But let's uh, try to get back to where we needed to be. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Crimson Omega clearly happy with what happened on Raw this week, but he says that Stephanie McMahon needs to stop emasculating men on TV now. Obviously, I haven't watched Raw this week. Matt has, so he has much more into that. So I can only really talk about <clears throat> how it is. But it's not actually just men that she emasculates. It's It can be women, too. She can emasculate heels, which I think is a very silly thing for them to do. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's a detriment to their characters, and... There isn't enough times. I mean, obviously now people are going to probably going to say, "Well, no, you're clearly wrong because Roman Reigns is getting one over on them." There is there hasn't been enough times while the authority's been around that they've had to eat their own words. And the reason I say that, Matt, the the time where the uh, the little guy was going up against the establishment, if you can call it that way, was Austin and McMahon. Yes. The tables in that rivalry were pretty much always on Austin's side. Like he would win about 70% of the fights that they would have, right? Against yeah. all odds. It was Vince McMahon being a dick and putting all the odds against Austin. Austin would find a way to get out of it, right? He would always be the man, right? Where it seems that what they're doing nowadays is like the authority wins 95% of the time and the little guy wins about 5%. So it's yeah. like it's completely off-center. And you've got, you know, Stephanie McMahon doing her thing. Um, so hopefully that's changed a bit. Hopefully. I haven't seen Raw, but um, I've heard about what happened on it. I, I kind of understand it. Um, I don't think it was such a sort of, like, demasculating thing. Mm. I well, she has gen- done that. Oh, yeah, she has. Yeah. I think it was just genuine, like, it was one of those things, like, it just gets over the fact that she's pissed to the, you know, her husband's had the shit kicked out of her. Yeah. And l- listen, right, it's not that she's a woman. That's the problem. If you had Teddy Long in her position, she's a doing McMahon. the same thing. Yeah, but if I'm saying if you had like Teddy Long in her position or Eric Bischoff, any of the GMs before, doing that same same thing, it's the it's the it's the same thing, right? They're still belittling these larger than life characters. The talent, yeah, right. Which I suppose you know, I mean, it it just doesn't seem right. Um, but that's 
that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll change that, but I don't think so. I think she, I think she probably gets a kick out of doing it, not just her character, but herself anyway. I think she quite likes playing that role. So yeah. Uh, MCV, MC MC Schwago, love that name, says that the Brits are on a roll with Fury and Eubank. This wasn't so much a uh, question, but I didn't want to reference this because it's just a little bit of non wrestling talk to add in there. Um, yeah, my, myself and Matt have been talking tons about boxing recently. Jeez, about all that. Yeah, like more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you, you actually left out Anthony Joshua there, funny enough, considering he didn't didn't win that. I do firmly believe that Anthony Joshua, with 12 more months of development, he's going to be far superior to Fury down the line. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Um, I think you and me, Matt, were talking about if Fury was to fight him now, that awkward jab would probably get the better of him, but it's just a matter of time, you know? Yeah, that's the that's way I look it. at it. Look at the power on, on Joshua. Just the, that guy is going to be champion, you know? It's just just how it's going to happen. You don't... Jeez, I mean, I'm sure that WWE would look at his his build and would love to have that similar style build on a wrestler of theirs, you know? He's just yeah. fucking chiseled out of stone, so... <clears throat> uh, I don't know about you, Matt, but I... I yeah I like uh, Eubank Junior but I just think he um, if he faces opposition that's uh, more decent than the ones he's fighting then I think he'll get um, I get the feeling that he might get shown up a lot more than Joshua will that's just my opinion what do you think about Eubank I think he's arrogant but then he is a Eubank mm. it doesn't fall far from the tree right that's it yeah. Do you think he'll get there, though? Do you think he'll become world champion? Uh, yeah, that's why not. I think he's got a chance. But if I were to rank him, who's who I think is more likely to win a championship, I'll go Joshua all day. But that's yeah. just me. And also because the heavyweight division is a little bit um, less complicated. It's a bit more cut, cut and dry. It's... Um, uh, there's... Uh, Anyway, I don't want to go into huge boxing talk, but that's how I see it going. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, British boxing is going great. It's awesome. It's uh, good to see boxing. Boxing was on the verge of dying, if I want to see, with the stranglehold that Mayweather had on it for a while, and these big fights just not paying off and no one getting excited. And yet when I watched the, the Joshua and White fight, Matt will tell you as well, that was a war. That's back, but it was boxing at its best right there. So awesome stuff, good stuff. Billy McGee asks a few questions. Uh, first of which, asking how we book Cesaro's return, but we actually answered that last week, so um, we won't be doing that again. But he does ask a very good question here on this list, and it's, who do we think will be the biggest breakout star next year? It's an interesting question, Matt. Mm. We haven't actually talked a lot about what we think is going to happen next year. Um, I mean, I did I did say last, uh, um, last year that I said that Roman Reigns definitely will be champion next year. And I was right. Yeah. Um, well, they saw it. They, they cut it fucking close, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. just a bit. Um, but uh, biggest breakout star, and obviously I'm guessing that you mean the main roster, but I did include who I think is going to have a great year in NXT as well, Matt. Okay. But it could be numerous people. I think next year there will be a call-up for Finn Balor. I think they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's only a matter of time. And I think they will call up Sami Zayn as well. I don't think he's... He, I don't think he's, uh, he should be on NXT for too long, if I'm honest. He, Who? Zane. Zane, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It just depends how the chips fall. You know, because they, now, they now you have to put in account of if they take too many people out of NXT, is NXT still the draw to the indie fans? You know, the fans like us. Yeah. So um, you have to think of that as well. But I do think Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, they're probably going to have a great year. If they go onto the main roster, I don't know. Maybe I'll get my heart broken and I've said this, but I don't think that WWE will... They, they can, but I don't think they will fuck up Finn Balor. I think they will... Don't... Uh, man, I don't, don't know. say maybe, that. For the love of God, I hope they don't fuck yeah, up Finn yeah. they, they, they better fucking not, because it's, it's one of the most easiest things to do, really, is to just book this guy correctly. But um, Sami Zayn, yeah, I think if um, he gets onto the main roster, I think it would be a huge baby face there. I think it would be oh, great. easy. So there is that on NXT easy. It's the people that got probably the biggest chance of the of of takeover, which is Gable and Jordan. I think they're going to be tearing the NXT division up all of next year. 
probably get a main roster at the end of the year as well, the way they're going. So. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, I haven't seen an act get over so quickly and so um, effectively than Gable and Jordan. I just, I to be honest, you can't even explain quite how it's worked. It I'm just sure. has. If you were to put a microphone in Gable and Jordan's hands and say, okay, now you tell me why you're so popular, I doubt they'd be able to tell you. But, you know what, sometimes it just works. You know, sometimes... It just is. It just <laughs> is. And there's no point trying to question it. Let's just all enjoy it for a little while. So, that's the way I go with it. But, uh, by the way, guys, they didn't show... We're going to talk about it later anyway, but they didn't show that tag team match that Gable and Jordan had at um, London. But, Not yet, that's next week, isn't it? Yeah. I actually think that they got the loudest cheer of the night. Easily. Well, Enzo and Cass got close. But... No. I think Gabriel and Jordan got the best one. They they, they were treated like fucking... Ho- they were treated like uh, hometown heroes in London. They may as well have been British, right? Yeah. Because we were treating them like they, like they were. <laughs> I'm sure that... For the, for the day, they were honorary Brits. Yeah. I'm sure that if you had Wade Barrett come down there for a match, he wouldn't have got cheered as much as Gavin and Jordan. It was mental. It really was. But still. Uh, Grizzy has an interesting uh, uh, sort of uh, thought track to us this week. And I thought this is quite cool to uh, reply back to it. Grizzy says that he enjoys the podcast a lot, but feels we are giving Raw a little too much shit. Especially when we when we use it in comparison to NXT, I think this question's got so much poignancy this week. It's unbelievable, considering. Yeah. He says that half of NXT are just some jobber matches that we would complain about if they were on Raw. Essentially, we're giving Raw, giving NXT a free pass sometimes, and being very harsh on Raw. Um, now, in terms of the jobber matches, before I get into the crux of the uh, of the. Uh, the comment here uh quite the contrary if you if you go back and listen myself and matt were great fans of the jobber matches that ryback had leading into his rise in fact don't know about you matt sometimes it seemed that those jobber matches were the most fun parts of raw that week yeah sometimes just seeing him just demolish a guy was quite fun and it got him over right ryback was doing pretty good until the whole CM Punk stuff, stuff happened when, yeah. he, when he started wrestling him too early in his career, granted. Yeah, when he got pushed into the main event picture. Yeah, but we liked the fact that he was having tons of job matches. It may not be on this show, but we did loads of episodes before on a different channel. Um, and I'm sure that's something that we said back then. It's so long ago now, but you'd think that's 2011 we're talking about. You know, Is it? 2011, 2012? Must be roughly around then. So... <sighs> Possibly. He's still looking at the better part of three years, right? Yeah. So, regardless, uh, I'm actually a fan of jobber matches. What I, what I don't like is when you get someone that beats someone that they think... Like, for instance, when we talk about Mark Henry and people having jobber matches against him, it's a little bit like... No one really... Uh, it's not really a jobber match. It's hard to explain. When you've got Mark Henry, you just feel sad, right? Because he doesn't give anything to the person that, that's getting a victory over him, even though WWE treats it like it is. Yeah, yeah. Right? When you've got, like, a Ryback going through tons of unknown people, it makes him look like a monster. It looks him look like an animal, right? It looks him look like he's going to kill people. And it gives a very different perspective. Like, you couldn't have Tyler Breeze go against tons and tons of jobbers in the same way Ryback did. But there's still a way you can use jobbing matches. But we're definitely not against jobbing matches with unknown talent, like local talent, like they do on NXT on the main roster. I yeah. would actually be happy with that. But let's get to the main part of it here. <coughs> now, I, believe me here, Grizzy, when I say this, I don't, I don't know about you, Matt, I worry a lot with every Raw, especially when we've been feeling that they've been getting a lot worse and we have to criticise them for being so, we actually, I actually worry each week this question, are we being too harsh? Are we being far too critical? Are we too close that we don't see the big picture? Are we... Uh, sort of the rose-tinted glasses sort of thing. Yeah, that sort of thing, right? We worry about that each week. And we give our opinion each week and, and they are genuine thoughts. 
but but I don't know about you, Matt. I I, I worry about that each each week just to make sure that I'm being as being as unbiased as I possibly can. Yeah. Right. But the main thing that I think that the reason why we are so critical of Raw and maybe sometimes give NXT a pass on some of the things it does bad, I think it honestly goes down to the fact that Raw is three hours and NXT is one. I think that's the crux of the situation here. So Raw being three hours each week already puts that show in a very hard position, just from the offset, right? That it's damn near impossible to make a consistent three-hour show, no matter what it is and how high quality it could be, be entertaining for every single minute of those three hours. Yeah. It's, 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 I always bring the comparison. The highest form of, of entertainment on a three-hour format, in my opinion, is the Lord of the Rings movies. Now, I'm not expecting Raw to do that. They're a weekly episodic show. But even then, at the height of what... <laughs> Damn it, I expect you to be an epic. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, at the height of what three-hour content could be, with all that money and a huge story and everything behind it, characters, all this money being put behind just three hours, right? Even then, I start getting a little bit distracted after three hours, right? You find that third hour, I'm a little bit like... Uh, I'm still into what I'm watching, but... Uh, I'm tired. By how much? Yeah, I'm, I'm exhausted by the show at that point, right? Um, and when you look at Raw in comparison, you've got three hours each week. Each week, every single week. I think sometimes we play down the fact that when they've got a pay-per-view week, when myself and Matt have to watch six hours plus of wrestling content, Oh yeah. maybe we've played it down, but that is going to wear us down every single week. And for some people being able to skip a Roy each week, we're not we able to watch every minute of it, right? Um, and we've been very good at catching each week. But when Raw has a bad week, it can feel like it lasts for, an, um, for, for fucking ever. It just feels like it never stops. Yeah. Um, when NXT has a bad episode, it's only an hour. And... It lasts a lot less in the memory because of that fact, and I'm sure that if WWE Raw was 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 only two hours, then you know if you have a bad episode, it's far easier far easier for us to get that out of our, out of our systems and be less critical going moving forward, sort of thing. Um, the expectation of NXT also is lower in, in addition as well, because on Raw they should be they should be hitting their stride each week. Raw is their main show. You expect them to go all out each week. Um, and Raw, in by general, I'm trying to cover all bases here. Raw, by general, is garnered towards a, a general audience. So a lot of the stuff they do isn't designed to make myself and Matt happy about what they're doing. You know, like, some stuff isn't designed for us to enjoy everything that's on their show. They treat it like a variety show in some in that some aspects that they want to make everyone happy with a little bit here and a little bit there nxt is absolutely without without question or apologies for it is absolutely garnered to fans like myself and that it is, it is designed for us the way that they do the show the way the characters are portrayed it is done to appeal to us Yes. Whereas Raw is done to appeal to lots of people. The three million that they have or are losing, right? So that's the main difference is really that the reason why we might be more critical of Raw and more criti and, and less critical of NXT. Um just in general, just with our thought patterns. What what's your general thought, Matt, with this? Do you think that we are being too harsh on Raw or do you um, think I could sort of understand the sort of um the argument, but I think you summarised it pretty well with the fact that it's as much as we say NXT is the better product, NXT is also more forgettable. In, yeah, oh, it's kind of a terrible way to phrase it, but you kind of get what, like you said, um, you can quite as easily just sort of go, just go, yeah, that wasn't so great, but I know next week will probably be better. Yeah. And, and it's not, three, you know, like one hour of bad 
is nowhere near as bad as three hours of bad. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's just the way it is. And when you've got, um, it's much easier to book a one-hour show. Believe me, guys. When Triple H comes out and says we have a hard time booking that third hour on Raw, he ain't fucking lying. And we had a question See before. You know, yeah. yeah, like we had a question before saying, "Oh, wouldn't you guys love to book? You know, wouldn't you love to book for WWE?" And we said, "Fuck no, we don't want that. <clears throat> we don't want to um, book I three hours." Accept that position. No. Uh, while we may be critical, by no means are we envious. They, like, they've got a fucking hard job but it's a job that they've chosen right it's a job they get paid a lot of money for yeah. so it, it's along those lines but yeah that, believe me i would not want to i do not envy any of their any of their position in terms of trying to book that that show and that third hour sometimes when you get a, a raw that's uh, mediocre for the two hours what drives it lower and makes us very angry about that episode that we can tell people to stay away from it is that third hour making those two mediocre hours seem a lot longer yeah. and a lot fucking worse. So it's um, all that together is uh, pretty much the reason why we go over there. But it, really the crux of our answer is, especially when we've had lots of bad brawls back to back, it can just wear us down. It really can. Um, and maybe some of our more critical ones have been done, Matt, don't know about you, I find that I get more critical of Raw if I've watched it in one sitting than if I've watched it in two or more. I don't, I, are you are you the same thing? Sort of? Yeah. Because I what what would you offer? What is your normal Raw watching pattern? Uh, my normal Raw watching pattern actually sort of staggers. Mm. Like I'll generally catch sort of maybe a third at a time. Yeah, yeah, and it may be whenever you've got time to catch it, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. My one is normally I catch an hour and a half on a Thursday night, and an hour and a half on a Friday night. That's normally how I do my roll. Um, and sometimes I might move those two nights forward in the week if I have to for recording a little bit earlier. So, But there have been occasions, Matt, where it's gone throughout the week and you said, oh, shit, you know, or maybe I've gone, oh, shit, I need to record tomorrow. And we're like, okay, we need to watch all of Raw tonight. Just binge watch. And then that's when sometimes Raw can be at its worst. If you've got a bad episode that you're watching three hours of it can feel like especially when it feels like you're like with the way that we do things i don't i don't want to use the word that we force ourselves into watching it but it can sometimes feel that way knowing that for the show by the way we love the show so don't try and make it simple oh we're so bad off oh my god what do we do yeah no we love doing the show we do it anyway but when we know when it's sort of along the lines of okay i can't really switch off the show i still have to get through this hour which i really not feeling, not not enticed to watch. Every single week, it can weigh you down. But um, to be honest, to, to have an to have an enticement to watch each week, this podcast has been fucking phenomenal. So you know, having wanting to to get through each week and give our thoughts and also satirizing it for you guys to make it a little bit more funnier for you guys and making jokes and all that sort of stuff. Um, and whenever it's Lana around, obviously it's sex-based jokes because that woman does weird things to me. So <laughs> there is that. Uh, I actually went back and listened to one of the old episodes, and I, oh man, I went, I went, I went way across the line. But still, Matt, it's time to review TLC. This is my review now. I'll oh, by the way, then. <laughs> well, yeah, we well, can still talk about it. I, I'm trying to explain it to you as it goes. That's on. fine. Um, so if you guys want to leave any questions, of course, you can leave them in the comment section below. You can also do it on our Twitter account, which is... At Talk Russell Pod. It is indeed. And also you can do it on Facebook, which a few of our fans have taken to doing. In fact, have we got a message on our Facebook that maybe I've forgotten to put in? Matt, can you check that while you're there? Are you close to a computer at all? Uh, I can. Just, me... just to see, because I seem to remember someone leaving one... And then Matt will butt in if we get there. Maybe it is. I don't know. Not quite sure. I, it's just I've got to get used to checking all of our different media outlets for questions. I normally just go in our community section on our YouTube and then do them all. Um, oh, I went to pick up my keyboard and my elbow is just completely... Ow! <laughs> oh, Ow! Is that all the driving that you did over the course of the week? You know? I could have gone dirtier Ow. than that, Matt, to be honest. You know? Let's have a look. Anything there? Because I know we've got a few questions on there. I don't know whether there's any been any recent ones been left on there at all. Maybe I've missed it. 
Hello. No. No? No? Okay. I'll tell you what, if, if we have missed it, guys... Unity! Uh, Unity! Um, oh, God. Um, we'll... Um, just let us know again, and we'll, we'll definitely get to it. We apologise if we missed anyone there. Just bedding in, period. We're just getting used to all of it, so... TLC, then, Matt. Tables, ladders, and chairs. No stairs this year. Just tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh. Um, I'm sure the big show and Eric Rowan are crying over the fact that their epic stairs match was uh, forgotten. Not really. Not. I think we could all sleep at night knowing that. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, so this show was obviously, you know, the it's going to be the last of the year. TLC, I find, Matt, has got a very good reputation of having uh, overall a fairly decent pay-per-view, shall we say, each year. I know yeah. WWE, I actually like the way they've been doing the aesthetic, very much like, you know, like um, old school gaming, some of the things that they've been doing the adverts with and stuff like that. And the even TLC one. Yeah, even the, some of the way that they did like the entrance plates and stuff, you know, when they come down, it has their names, had like, you know, like computer sounds and stuff like that. So it kind of went a little bit different with the aesthetic this year. Fair play. That's awesome. I like that. Um and it's one of those rare events where they actually do a, something a little bit different with the actual um, the look of the show. I know it's the same set, but when they've got like ladders and tables all adorning the stage, it looks yeah. a little bit different from when they do most of their shows on the same set as they do Raw and have just the, the fucking the logo spread across the thing. It's, yeah. Sometimes that can be a little bit annoying. When you go back and look at old pay-per-view sets... And it's like, ah, that's really, that's really fun when they did I that. I miss some of the old sets. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the match started with the tag team title ladder match for the Lucha Dragons. It started with that. It started with it, yeah. Uh, it looks like a really odd opening match, but okay. It, but to be honest, it uh, once the match continued, it was a good choice, if I'm honest. It, it set the tone of the show. But the Lucha Dragons, the Usos, and obviously the New Day. You had Xavier Woods at ringside. Um, in in horror, as you're seeing the uh, the lengths that all these teams went to to uh, win this this title match. At the end of the match, he did actually just uh, he wasn't just being an idiot. He did say, "Well, you know what? Is no disqualification, so I can get involved." So he did. Um, yeah. Which is what I was thinking at the time. I was like, "You're stopping him from just going in and wrestling. Like, no, there's no DQ. He could go and get the belts himself." Which I thought was a Potential finish, I said that in the predictions, that that might be something that happens. But Matt, this team was mental. It was maybe a little bit too mental to what I'm used to nowadays, shall we say. Um, when, Matt, I get the feeling that these three teams went out there with the same mindset as the likes of when the Hardys, Edge and Christian and the Dudleys went out there and said, you know what, we'll put our bodies on the line and we'll steal the fucking show. Let's fucking show them, yeah. Yeah. I get the feeling that these teams went out there with that sort of mentality, and if that's what they were looking to do, then they they damn near did it. Yeah, they, 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 this was a match with fucking tons, and I mean tons of spots, tons of big spots, done all across the ring on the outside. As you can imagine, there were ladders used a plenty, and lots of, lots of falling off the ladder. You know what to expect, except it's dialed up an extra notch from what you would expect ladder matches of this generation to be they uh, yeah they went uh, they they went a step further than you would normally expect them to go and this uh, was capped off with Callisto performing a Selena del Sol off of the top of the ladder and I think it was Jimmy Uso who he did it on I don't know I might have got it wrong through another ladder so yeah if that sounds bonkers and mental, it's because it fucking was. The the amount of stuff that could have gone wrong with this move is... I mean, I, I haven't got an extra episode of this podcast to explain all the different things <laughs> that could have happened. Um, so I'll say the same thing to these guys, Matt, that a certain Vince McMahon said to Mick Foley after he got thrown off of a cell. Obviously, that was a lot worse, but still, I'll say the same thing that he said to, to Mick Foley. Thank you for doing that, but by fucking God, never fucking do it again. I don't... It was awesome to see. I don't need to see it again. It was kind of scary, right? It was... Um, I'd be happy not ever seeing that again for their safety, right? It, it was like, someone's going to get their fucking back broken in this movie. It's, 
it was pretty like once he's there and he's like literally like fucking vertical Matt going you know how the Celine Dion soul goes yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like and, you, and you're going there's only way this can end and it's not going to end pretty <laughs> this you know? is going to hurt this is going to fucking hurt um, so that was awesome but I'd be happy ne- happy in my life never seeing such a thing happen again but um, it was an awesome match it set the tone um, it was I know WWE likes to brand this show as being their demolition derby you know of uh, of their pay-per-views if they wanted to get that point across this was probably a pretty decent match to um, just demonstrate kind of, it with il- yeah illustrate that that point um, but the New Day get the win thanks to Xavier Woods throwing a trombone at Kalisto by the way as this happened JBL got Kalisto mixed up with Sin Cara and I don't know if you saw this Matt but he went on a blocking spree when fans were like we kind of expect you to get the right person, you know. See, <laughs> it's the least you can do. <clears throat> like the Usos, you might be able to give them a pass with, but Kalisto and Sin Cara are, you know, you could tell you know, the difference between You know, those Mexican guys. For instance, like, especially from the back, right? Because that's the view that, that JBL's got. I mean, Sin Cara doesn't even have the back thing that Kalisto has. You know, Like the, the dragon thing. Yeah. So, it's uh, how he got it wrong, I don't know, but... Yeah, he was blocking people saying that, um, you know... Uh, we're a moron. <laughs> yeah, when, when actually, we're all right, to be honest. He should. And maybe he's blocking people out of the fact that they're actually they're actually right, to be honest. But, to be honest, he does these huge blocking sprees. I don't care. doesn't make him any better at his job. Obviously, he just can't take criticism. And I actually saw some of the tweets, and I agree, some of the tweets sometimes that these people get set, sent are fucking disgusting, and they should be blocked for it. But one of the tweets that I saw was highlighted was actually very well spoken. It was like, yeah, like, I get it's a hard job, but we, we do expect you to get the, the wrestlers right. We do expect you. I, I think he was actually defending Cole or something. I'm not sure the way it went. But regardless, JBL went on this blocking spree and everything like that. So, yeah. Sounds about right. I know, apparently, I hear that quite a lot of people have been, are, are actually blocked by JBL. Yeah, I'm sure he's blocked more people than are actually following him, if I'm honest. And if that's what makes him happy, fine. But as I said, it doesn't make him any better at his job. It just makes him... It puts his head in the sack. But there you go. Uh, New Day get the win because of that trombone, as I said before. And um, obviously this, this uh, you know, costed... Um, costed... Sorry, cost... Man, my words are getting more... I'm forgetting the English language. JBL. Jesus, yeah. Um... It's cost Kalisto his chance to nab the belts, but the New Day still the champions. Myself and Matt got that prediction wrong, but uh, awesome match to, to get the show going. Rusev versus Ryback. Uh, while this match was a touch better than I expected, Matt, and what probably it was a little bit better than you would have expected as well. Rusev, um, Rusev and Ryback essentially had a match that you had already kind of seen three weeks. It's you know in the last three weeks you had they in the last three shows they've had three matches they're all pretty much the same right yeah i can imagine they weren't terribly um inventive yeah i mean they basically did the entirety of last week again where lana did the thing where she faked as if she was injured again by getting knocked over by ryback and him being the idiot falls for it again he gets kicked in the head accolade you know where this goes but uh, it's only Ryback being the idiot here for falling for... Fool me once! Yeah? People can finish the rest of that for Ryback and he can learn the rest of that. Shame on you, Ryback. Shame on you. But still. Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. Again, a match that was uh, a little better than uh, I possibly had anticipated. I thought this match had good use of the the chairs, though. This being a chairs match. So there was that. Um, the ending spot in this match here, Matt, was, uh, you know, the corner finisher that Alberto Del Rio has, where he stomps on them? Yeah. Yeah, he's been using that a lot since he came back. Imagine that done on a bed of chairs. That was essentially how the match finished. Fair enough. So, if that's going to be a move that finishes a match, and you want to make it even dirtier, then they, they, they accomplish that. Time. I guess that's one way you can do it. Both men, though, they've got their backs walloped with a chair. The only thing I will say about this match, and it was fine, it was entertaining, certainly wasn't bad, was that there's something lacking in these matches 
And I know why they don't do them, and I agree why they shouldn't do them, but there's something lacking in these matches without straight head head hits of the chair. I went back and watched the Mick Foley documentary, and when The Rock used to hit him over, flush over the head with a chair and Foley would flop to the floor, it felt like the guy, he basically killed the guy, right? Like, when, he's t- when they're taking these back chair shots, it just doesn't have the same impact watching it as a head shot does, you know? Yeah. Um, like I said, don't get me wrong, I, I'm happy that they're not doing them because it's for all the right reasons, but it, I just I, I just thought about it. <laughs> I miss gratuitous violence. Yeah, I, yeah but um, maybe they just need to find a way, new way of using that chair that invokes a similar response because when they're doing it on the back now, I don't know, to me it's just like, oh yeah, it's, it's cool. And, it's uh, tame, isn't it? Now, I will say, at the end of the show, someone else was using chairs on the back, and it certainly didn't look tame, so I will give him that, but still. Mm. The Wyatts versus Team ECW. Oh, yes. A match with the absolutely the correct outcome. Did you know the finish of this match, Matt? You know all the results, do you? But do you know how this match ended up? So, East, um, Wyatts won. I know that much. Yeah. But the way they won, I was quite happy with. Now... We had said before this match that we thought that the Wyatts they, they kind of need a, they kind of need to get a lot of victories under their belt. This technically should be the start, right? Yeah. So at first you've got uh, Rowan who gets put through a table. I think Rhino is the one that does it to him. It was a table elimination, wasn't it? Table elimination. So it becomes three on four, and then the Wyatts go, "Well, you know what? You've had your free pass. Now prepare to die." So they essentially. Um, eliminate one by one every member of Team ECW and you've got three members of the White family standing strong, not gone through a table. So Nice. That's the way it goes. The one thing I will say as a note from this, Matt, is that more and more I see Braun Strowman, I'm seeing dollar signs. I am. I'm seeing this guy, especially at the end of this match. He's, where... um, he's learning and he's learning very well. Yeah. Like, and the fact, fact is, there is an amateur requirement of him at the moment. He's in the perfect role in the uh, where he is at the moment. There's, I couldn't think of a better way to put him on the show at the moment. But when he put at the end, you got Bubba Ray, who's the last guy, and he puts Bubba Ray through that table and screams at the camera. I'm like, yeah, this you can use this guy. This guy has got something there. You know, he is intimidating. He is scary, right? He is... Money. Yeah, you can use this guy, right? I honestly think that this guy, if he, if he learns quick, I'm not saying that he needs to be in a title rivalry within two years. No, he's got time on his... He's got time on it, on it on his hands. But down the line, he could be a big monster heel for that company. And he could fulfill a good role for them. Um, whether or not he's in the Wyatts or not, don't mind. I just think you look at him there... And he is imposing. Right? Yeah. So I think there's something to be done there. I just, like I said, when he put Bubba Ray through that table and he just roars at the at, at the audience, I was like, yeah, you know what? There, there is something here. You know, there's something that you can use. He's He's got, what's that, the, word, the, the description I like to use? He's got lots of applications on the roster. He's got a lot of ways you can use this guy. And, um, yeah, as you say, Matt, he's slowly learning the trade. And he's uh, in the role, which, like I said, isn't doesn't ask too much of him. He's doing... He hasn't put a foot wrong, in my eyes. Yeah. So, fair play to the guy. He's done well. And to be honest, he's in the right stable because you've got someone like Luke Harper in there who probably doesn't mind training him on the side and teaching oh, him some it, of the yeah. stuff. And Luke Harper is probably the best wrestler, best pure wrestler in that group. So, And then you've got... Easily. You look actually the more you think of it, yeah, he's perfectly fitted because then you've got Bray Wyatt in there teaching him how to do. He's learning from Bray Wyatt how to be a good promo guy, and probably not learning that much from Rowan, but still, you know, I think he's. Uh, what I'm saying is the future looks bright for this guy, and hopefully, with another few victories, the future will look more brighter for the Wyatt than it has been for a while. So, I reckon they need a few more victories like this. Stick him against a lot more teams of four. Let them roll through them. Make them look like a force that the top guys in the company would be afraid of going against. And then you can use them. So, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. Now hear me out, Matt. 
Uh, I, I'm glad that Dean Ambrose won the championship in this match, which he did. But man, there's I'm. Gonna... I was going to say there's a butt coming. There is. I'm going to be a little bit critical of Dean Ambrose in this match, and it's not so much the match itself, but I'm noticing a sort of trend with with with, with Ambrose recently, where one he's becoming just a touch too formulaic in his matches in his actual wrestling. And he okay. hasn't actually had a world-class match in quite a while. Now, it's maybe down to the fact he hasn't been used properly, and by God, I would admit people with that. But he has had opportunities to have big-time matches. He had the Roman Reigns match, which I didn't think was very good. You know, that finals match for the tournament. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was rushed because they didn't have time, but it still wasn't really the match I was hoping it would be. So... I'm sure Ambrose has got it in him, but you see, maybe I'm seeing Reigns improve at such. He's becoming the main event star that they wanted him to be, and he's performing in a lot of very good singles matches, and he's doing very well. I think I think Reigns is improving more than fans like to give him credit for. Yeah, but Ambrose, I haven't seen much more from him from him than I saw last year. That's true. So. Yeah, I think that's maybe what I'm trying to say. Maybe I'm asked, what, what I'm trying to say maybe is that I wish I could see a little bit more from the guy at the moment, but still. I'm getting very bored of his slingshot clothesline. That is getting way too overused. Jesus, is it? Um, that should be done once every now and then, not five times a match. Not every single time he's thrown against the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Like, I'm all for having a signature move, but so that's just... No. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. Um, now listen, I, I do enjoy um, Ambrose's character and his charisma, but I don't know, maybe I'm trying to see that little that little bit extra from the guy, but still. But regardless of that, I wasn't a huge fan of this match. Maybe this is the reason why I, I'm bringing this up. Ambrose walks out the winner, and um, you can only hope that um, they do something with him more than what they did with Kevin Owens, which was having a lot of matches that really weren't that good. Let's just be honest. So uh, we'll we'll see where it goes with that. But still, uh, Charlotte versus Paige. So Matt, you know this Charlotte heel turn is um, continuing. Shall we say? Is a foot. Is a foot. She cheats her way to another victory in this match. Um, people may have misunderstood me. Before, but I actually like the idea of Charlotte turning heel like this. Um, but Matt, I think they've just gone gone uh, about it just too quickly. They've not. They've been as, as subtle as a rhino in a china shop. It's just it's 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 just not. They've just gone full pace with something that you feel that they should have planted seeds of doubt here and there. Whereas they just yeah. gone full. They've just gone full strength, you know. Um, and it's too soon from Paige's actions. That when you look at her in this match and want to get behind her as a face, you can't really do it. So you're caught in this awkward situation where you're like, well, both of them are fucking evil bitches. Why would I care who wins this match? So why would I care that Charlotte screwed out Paige with the things that Paige said less than a month ago? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's what I'm getting at here, guys. Again, wasn't a huge fan of this match again. It was all right. But to be honest, I've kind of seen it already. This is kind of a rehash of the match that they kind of were, that they already had. So uh, I wasn't that impressed. But um, yeah, they're still going on with the Charlotte heel turn. But still, I still think they went too quick. They went too quick. That's right. The heel turn carries on and roll. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. So uh, Roman Reigns versus Sheamus, the main event of the night. So with two matches before this one, I wasn't too happy about. People may have expected with the finish of this, sorry, with the outcome of who won the match, I wouldn't be happy with this either. But I actually quite like this match. Uh, I thought that um, there was a lot of big spots here. A lot of these guys put their bodies on the line, especially Sheamus. Took a lot of big hits in this match. Took a lot of bumps that were quite awkward, like getting thrown through like a fucking stacked up chairs and tables thing, which um, probably was quite awkward to land. There's actually a spot here at the end of the match, Matt, where Roman Reigns does the Superman punch on Sheamus, who's on the ladder, and he falls headfirst into a table. That pretty much Ooh. knocked him out. Uh, which, was, which was the moment that you would think, 
Roman Reigns has just won this thing. He's won. Sheamus was gone. You know, he's in another world. He's seen stars. He's back in Ireland with his mammy watching TG Kaha, and he doesn't know where the fuck he is anymore, right? He just, that's where he is. Um, but, no, as you would imagine, the League of Nations come out, they screw Roman Reigns, and then Sheamus manages to unhook the championship in what I thought was a very decent match. Um, one that I thought showed that um, Reigns has a bit of versatility. He's having a lot of good, if not great, matches recently. In the last two months, he's uh, gone up another level. You know, in his in-ring work. I'm not just going on the fact of the way that his character has been, because the man he we we put him as worst booked wrestler of the year. But yeah. I think his in-ring work is improving exponentially, especially over the last couple of months. So there is that. But what was the best thing about this match, Matt, is because you know what I've been asking all this time since Sheamus won the title, actually that I wanted Roman Reigns to be the way that I wanted to book him, which was he was an unrelenting... beast ass kicker. Yeah, he was unrelenting hunter, right? He was going to take yeah. down Sheamus. There was nothing that was going to happen apart from Sheamus getting his head kicked in every single night until Roman got his title back. And finally, it seemed like that Reigns, for the last 10 minutes of this show exploded onto our television screens or my computer screen as it were yeah because he's out there he's pissed off you've got um he's annihilating the league of nations he's annihilating sheamus and then triple h comes in he's trying to calm the situation down and reigns is like you know what i've had enough of your shit i'm going to kill you and he proceeds to fucking murderize the guy he fucking destroys him Puts him through a table, power bombs him on a table, then elbow drops him through said table. He's throwing him from pillar to post, just destroying Triple H while Stephanie McMahon is screaming in, you know, dissatisfaction um, on the sidelines. And as much as people are trying to stop him, people are just afraid of getting close to the guy because he's going to destroy them. And um, in the end, what I thought was really good, while he's doing all this, and he looks like he's gonna, he looks like he's gonna fucking just break Triple H in half. This is the Roman Reigns, finally. That what was the one thing I said, Matt? That the character of Roman Reigns all this time has played by the authorities' rules. He's been a good little employee, right? Yeah. It's the first time that I've seen Roman Reigns, the character, not care about what the authority think. He was just like, oh, you know what? I'm pissed off. I feel like breaking your fucking legs. So I'm going to... Straight up snap. So I'm just going to destroy her. And if I get fired for it, so fucking what? Don't care anymore. This is what I am. And... He took matters into his own hands. He dealt an, a proper ass kicking. That the ass kicker... Uh, you know... Um, arrogant... Asshole reigns that we all like. That, sh that happens every so often. Every, like, almost for five minutes every month, that Roman Reigns comes out and shows us what he could be when it looks like they decided to give that five minutes each month a fucking shot and give that a try. And guess what? It fucking worked. The entire Philadelphia crowd would have loved Roman Reigns to stay there for another 15 minutes, destroying the fuck out of Triple H. They loved it. They were chanting, this is Philadelphia, the home... Of uh, die-hard, rabid wrestling fans, right? The TLC in Philly as well? Yeah. Okay. Right? We're talking about Philadelphia. ECW, hmm? right? They would never yeah. accept Roman Reigns. Guys, Philadelphia accepted him like a fucking hero for doing what he did here. Roman Reigns, the one that all the hardcore wrestling fans, remember, have been booing all this time, was, was, was treated like he was... Fucking Gable and Jordan, right? He, they, they they loved him. It's like everything, it's almost like all the puzzle pieces fitted in. They figured out what sort of guy this should be. It took them long enough, but they did it. And it, it was so good the way that this happened. I mean, he came back, Matt. When they've got, like, so that basically Reigns is starting to walk out. They've hoisted up Triple H. Triple H, by the way, doesn't know where he is. He's got his ass kicked, right? Reigns walks, you know, just as he looks like he's about to walk out, he's like... You know what? I'm probably fired. Let's just do one thing more. He races from the stage to the ring where they're carrying out Triple H, runs around and just fucking spears the shit out of him. 
right? While the guy's being lifted up by two guys, he just fucking annihilates um, Triple H. So Triple H is on the floor, annihilated, and Reigns is like, well, that was a lot of fun. Maybe I should do this again. We should do this again sometime. Yeah. Now, obviously, this does bring up the whole Reigns against Triple H thing, which I'm sure is happening. That's a WrestleMania match that will happen. But... Well, that's, that's a difficult one. Yeah. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it probably will. If not, if not WrestleMania, that match is happening. Absolutely. But I think WWE should look at this. and Look, look what they accomplished. They're diehard Philadelphia fans cheering for Roman Reigns. That means they hit something. They knocked something out of the park. And they should remember that going forward. They should never forget... Why they cheered? They made Philly. They made Philadelphia cheer for Reigns. Yeah, right. Which is no easy task, but they did it. WWE are capable of making this guy a massive star. They fucked it up since now, but this gives me some hope that we will get that Reigns that I think will be a lot of fun going forward. So there we go. My review of this show is I thought it was uh, as good as the card could possibly be. The card wasn't great, let's be honest. But that last 10 minutes of Roman Reigns being the Roman Reigns I've always hoped he could be, man, that was satisfying. That was a lot of fun. So, I give the show a... Uh, it's worth a watch. I give this... Uh, watch it once. I don't think there's any hugely exemplary matches except maybe the tag team match at the beginning of the night. But, uh, yeah, that's my review for TLC. Well, maybe Matt, I don't know, I know you've watched Raw, but if I were to say if you're going to watch anything in particular, what's the tag team match in the last 10 minutes? That would probably be the yeah. key parts of this, of this show, I would say. Fair enough. I mean, so, obviously I caught Raw, I didn't catch TLC. Yeah. Any of TLC, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so obviously you started off, because it can't, and it can't start in any other way than the authority. What a shock. Yeah. Oh, you're going, in, you're going into your... You're going into I may as well crack into it. Yeah, as well. Yeah, crack, yeah, crack on. To finish off with? Yeah, crack on. Um, so you've got Steph basically just like, I'm not going to... F- like, brings out Reigns, calls him an ass, and slaps him around a bit. A lot, to be fair. What are we uh, talking about? Like, as in, like, she's, like, hysterical. So, like, she slaps him once, she slaps him twice, and then she literally just goes, like, just machine guns him. What what is uh, Reigns like while this happens? Is he just smiling? Or stoic, like 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 cold, hard stoic. I would laugh. I would like to if he had laughed at her. He smirks, mm. but not a proper laugh. But he's just sort of like you're pathetic, and he's just like I'm pathetic. I think you're pathetic. I think your husband's pathetic. Oh, that's I think good. Dad's pathetic. Um, cue, that was cue the slaps. Yeah. Um, oh, fair play. No, I like that. And then she, then we've just got Steph just like, I won't fire you. My husband told me not to. Mm. But that doesn't mean my dad won't fire you. Way Big Vince, big, big Vince Pop. Yeah. Um, what, was he actually at, I heard he was at the show. Was he, what, did he, he come out the then? Show. He wasn't there at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, I can't remember what the opening match was. Um, I'll just really just go and highlights of sort of to carry on from TLC. Yeah, we don't have time to go through every yeah. single um, yeah. I feel bad for Bo Dallas and R Truth. Okay. Go they on. had a match. Okay. Halfway through that match, cut to Tron, Vince appears. <laughs> he's pulled up in the limo and he's literally just stomped on down, arms are swinging, into the ring, grabs a mic, get the hell out of my ring. <laughs> To be honest, no one's going to care about missing a Bo Dallas R Truth match, though, are they? It's why they were picked. <laughs> so that was it. It was just sort of like, oh, oh poor Bo, <laughs> Bo Truth, just get on! It's like, okay. Um, yeah, then cue the whole Reigns, get your ass out here. It was actually quite good because even still, sort of like, even in the face of Vince McMahon, like, Reigns is still just like, I stand by what I did. Yeah. I'm not going to kiss your ass and sort of beg for forgiveness. He's not going to change his mind with Vince. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you had um, Vince who was just sort of like, um, <laughs> you don't think I could kick your ass. I could kick your ass. <laughs> he even takes the jacket off and starts unbuttoning the shirt. Um, 
and Seamus comes out. Mm. I'm sort of like, oh, it'd be an honor to kick it, to kick his arse, sort of thing. Yeah. And it's, it was quite good. Um, the best bit was Reigns, because Vince did his classic, you want a championship match? Hey, well, tough. Yeah. Um, they all, and then he's just like, they always fall for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. what a silly crowd. Um, but you had, but this was a sort of like, give me, give me a match for the title or like, if I lose, I get fired. Yeah. Unfortunately, that screams win. Um, but you basically had, do you reckon that gave it away then? A bit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you had, oh, what was it? You pride yourself with having such great melons, but all it seems now is you just have shriveled little pl- prunes. He loves talking about people's testicles, doesn't he? He's a little bit of testicle talk. Yeah, he's, yes. he's, yeah I think he's um, he's got some deep rooted issues there. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's good. It was obviously that's that unfortunately plays into Vince's card. You know what it's like. Say he doesn't have the bollocks and he'll do it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's question like a, his question the the seeds, you know the the. the, the that's it. He's fruit. like Marty McFly when you call him chicken. Yeah. <laughs> um. But no, it was good. Uh, oh, you had an extreme rules match. What for the title? No. Oh. I'll go skipping back, sort of another bit. Sort of like we're going back to being in Philly. Yeah. An extreme rules match. Of Team ECW versus the Wyatts. Oh, okay. Okay. It was very good. Okay. <laughs> For PG WWE <coughs> Extreme Rules matches, it was very good. Is this like the blow off to their feud, or do you think they're having more matches? I don't know. Two, I'd like two to... very violent matches. The Wyatts won again. Yeah. So it's pretty much over, yeah. Um, and obviously, Bray started it was like fitting. To bury you in the city you were born, sort of thing. <laughs> obviously, because obviously it's Wyatt, awesome little promo. Yeah. Um, but for PG Extreme Rules matches, that was actually pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tables, chairs, kendo sticks, the lot. It was good. Brawling oh. in the crowd. You had Braun Strowman pick up Tommy Dreamer in a body slam position. Yeah. They're outside of the crowd. Mm. He Strowman runs at the barricade and essentially just plants Dreamer into the barricade, who's oh. still upside down. Oh. And they just barrel through it and end up on the floor. Oh jeez. But oh it was just so it was physical, it was everything you'd want out of it. I find, I find like when some people say, "Oh, you can't have a good extreme rules matches in the PG environment." It's like you can. You just have to be a fuck site more creative. It is possible. I think this was it. Yeah, this is quite a, is a very good example of um, of, yeah, of PG extreme rules. Yeah. Um. Oh man, the more you are saying, think about this, man. Man, I'm for the one of the roars I missed over the course of this fucking year. The, yeah. Probably the only one I missed, let's be honest. And it's like, it would probably sound like one of the better ones of the it, year. It, <laughs> like... was a very good, it was a very good roar. <laughs> I mean, I remember hearing people in the um, in the queues at NXT just going, actually, it was worth watching. And everyone's like, what? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually think a little downer of the night was the tag, was everything in the tag team tournament. Not the tag team tournament, but the tag team picture. Yeah, okay. Um, cause you had the new day come out mm. and they were like, Oh, last night was so hellacious. And like, we just want to thank everyone. In fact, and they bring out the Usos and they bring out the Lucha Dragons. And it, it felt quite heartfelt. It's like, I don't know how you guys are standing. It's like sort of going to Kalisto. I don't know how you're on two legs still. Yeah. Um, and they basically blow smoke up each other's asses for a bit. And they finished with a handshake and it was all a bit weird. Yeah. Especially considering this was after the extreme. You're, you're waiting. Match. You're you're waiting for the um for the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. But there wasn't really one until they left. What do you mean? 
Well, the um, the Usos and the Lucha Dragons left, and they got like pretty much up to the Tron. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, everything we said, we mean it from the bottom of our hearts. We're so sincere. But that doesn't change a thing because new day rocks sort of thing. Oh, it's so it's like, not even oh. like a burn on them sort of thing. It's more like just them. It was like, yeah, it. no, fair play. It was good. Like we, you fought, we all fought well last night. We did it all for the crowd. But we're still the better team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at that point, the Usos and the Lucha Dragons are like, nope, fuck you, and stormed into the ring and beat them up. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like much of a burn, though, really. Like, didn't it was you... just like, I guess it was just after the hype of that. Like, yeah. You can tell, because they played the video footage of um, like the slaps from earlier on in the night between yeah. the ECW Extreme Rules match. And this tag team moment. Do you think this? And uh, you segment... can hear the metal work being folded away. <laughs> like, oh really? Flying. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> but like, do do you feel though that um, that like maybe this segment did it just go on too long? Maybe? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say it added anything. Yeah. Okay. Do you, they're probably going to have another match by the sounds of it. This... I reckon. Yeah, I reckon so. I reckon we'll see another match at yeah. um, Rumble. Um, but apart from everything else, oh, Miz is a dick. Well, well, we've, um, we've been saying that for weeks, mate, so, yeah. But I guess the main event... Yeah. The highlight. The big talking point. Big you know? talking point. He... Roman fought with a very stacked deck against him. What do you mean? Uh, right, so the League of Nations got involved. Mm-hmm. But at the time that they were getting involved, Vince was getting involved. Okay. Because he was sat ringside the entire time, because obviously, yeah. by the end of it... You know, he's thinking to himself, yeah, well, in about 15 minutes time, I'm going to fire his ass. Yeah. Um, so Vince was getting involved. Const- Vince was the constant distraction of the referee. Yeah. Um, so whenever the League of Nations got involved, it... which they showed, they showed like before the match, there's Vince just chatting with Rusev and Del Rio and that. Yeah. It, it sounds to me like, like he wasn't just like here for like a cameo that he was like very much actively involved in this Raw. He took a Superman punch. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeez. That's probably the most involved he's been in, like, years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go on. To, um, with the whole distractions and everything, mm. um, like, Rusev was on one end of the ring, um, on the rope, and it's just like, it's just like, um, Reigns is like, nope, punch for you. Um, he, like, narrowly, there was a point where he countered a brogue kick with a spear, Mm. which looked no that was the finish okay again my moments mixed up yeah your spots no, mixed up he, <laughs> he, again my spots mixed up he punched Rusev mm-hmm. he went to alert, I think it was like to get the referee or something and there's like Vince still chatting with the ref so Reigns punched him okay quite hard like, how much of a bump did uh, did old Vinnie Mac take? He took an apron bump. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeez. All right. Okay. Um, and not a weak one. It looked fairly... Um, it looked quite good. Yeah, he, took, he took the bump for range, shall we say, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, after that, it was just sort of like the most... The one thing I was most looking forward to was like, what's the pop like? Yeah. And then, yeah, like, after all the beatings that... Reigns took from the um, from the league and things like that. He's a bit fucked up in the corner. The Sheamus just like, nope, it's fucking done now. Mm. Um, goes for bro kick and he receives a very dirty spear. Yeah, quite a hefty w- one. Worthy of a championship win. Shall worthy we? of a win spear yeah. and the crowd popped for the spear. Yeah, and for the pin. For the pinfall, and he wins the title then. Yeah, and he wins the title. We've got a new champion. We do. Wow. Uh, what's an interesting um, kind of thought process on this, merging our two reviews together? Why do you think they did this on Raw and not TLC? I mean, I'm not saying it's the proper rating, but I mean, obviously, clearly they wanted to have the, the match with, you know, have like a, a, a drawing match with Sheamus and... and yeah, and I, don't, I don't know. Um It's maybe along the lines that they, they maybe thought, of, maybe they thought of this of this idea and the way to do it, but they thought of it too late to incorporate it into TLC Possibly. at that point. So it made more sense to for that frustration to build up and have the finish in TLC. 
maybe it's a one on the nine. Actually, more I think of it, maybe you can't have what happened on Raw without having that last ten minutes at TLC to build it up to that. Yeah, you know? especially but, with um, with Vince getting involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have a reason for someone like that to come out of his fucking you know shell. Shell. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, essentially. Um. So yeah. Oh. Jeez, I'm actually quite shocked. Like, you know, when, when normally when Vince is around on the show, he's normally there for just like one segment, then he'll go away. Yeah, uh, but like for him, no, he, he when he involved. actually turned up and that, he was quite actively present. Yeah, that's good. That's only good for Reigns. You know, that's that's special, something special for that. And um, I mean, if anything, it kind of proves one thing to all the people who are thinking, meh. It kind of goes to prove that well. Vince is genuinely behind the guy. Yeah, well, yeah, he's always been behind Reigns. He just hasn't been able to figure out how to get him over look properly, him. has he? Yeah. Like, what I look at this is, like, just going back into things that one of the things that we said before, where we said that this Reigns and and um, and Sheamus rivalry will not last more than a month. And clearly they have the same sort of deep feeling here. I'm not saying that their feud is over, but they've given Reigns the belt. They probably will have a rematch at... Um, at Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble yeah. but they but they don't feel as if a straight feud with with Sheamus and Reigns can get over because it's not really much a feud between Reigns and Sheamus as it is Reigns and the fucking McMahons now. That's what it really yeah. is, right? Like almost almost looking back at Austin back in his time, he wasn't really feuding with Dude Love in those matches. We had all the the odds stacked against him. Or anyone, or The Rock. He wasn't, well, he was feuding with The Rock. But but at the same time, he was feuding with Vince, right? Vince was the main guy he was trying to get at. Or, or, yeah, these, the whole these, time. These guys, these chosen guys by, by, uh, by Vince were just obstacles, and hard obstacles, but obstacles nonetheless for Austin yeah, to have to get. Yeah, something to march through. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, but, but, you, but you got a big pop here, Reigns. You got the oh, pop. yeah. Yeah. Which obviously, he must be looking around about this time, like last year. You got you got the disaster of his career, which was like the Royal Rumble booking, which just obviously didn't work at all for him. And it took them a long time to figure it out. But I tell you what, you got to give WWE props. It looks like they have, right? You know, um, it looks like they. Hopefully, they just don't revert back, and they suddenly you've got Roman Reigns, the champion, going out there smiling and pontificating about things that have happened and we get all the reins that we didn't like before just with the belt strapped around him. That is still a possibility, what they could do. That's why I'm hoping WWE remember these these two shows. I'm like, okay, this is this is how we got it right. Let's just keep doing this, right? Let this, this, is, how not... we, this is how we do it. Yeah, so let's, let's hope with that, but still. And I'm happy because everyone knows that knows on this show, me, myself and Matt, we're actually big fans of reins. We actually want him to become a huge star. So. Yeah. Um... You know, we don't want to spend the next uh, ten years with them trying to flutter around, trying to find someone for the company, because um, they're never gonna. Just because we want them to make some of these people the stars that we want to, doesn't mean we should overlook people that maybe deserve it and maybe are are good as well. Like I always think that Roman Reigns has been massively downplayed by a lot of people, but yeah. um, but still, it's that. So. So, de- so it's, uh, what? How would you review? What was your review score for Raw? A review score. Yeah. It's worth a watch. Was it There's worth bits... a rewatch though? Is it? No, no, no. No. Um, some of it. Okay. Maybe. But you definitely give it a thumbs up though. Oh yeah, I definitely give it a thumbs yeah. up. Um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of give the same thing for TLC. So I think that the only thing with TLC. I th- one thing I want to add it in without review is I don't think many people are going to go back in droves to watch TLC. In, all in all, it wasn't a very memorable event, um, but it was it was okay to watch it. You know, it was fine. But uh, maybe Raw was maybe a lot more memorable, has a lot more impactful moments than TLC had. It certainly sounds like it. So yeah, when well, you had Vince McMahon back, and that's like whenever that happens, it's always good. Mm. You know what they did, Matt? They let the good guy win, which doesn't happen very often. That's it. Get one over on the authority. Two nights in a row. Jeez. So there is that. And uh, we'll definitely see how this goes. Hopefully um, hopefully, it continues. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes from there. NXT TakeOver then, Matt. Here we Ooh, go. Yes. This is what everyone's been waiting for. NXT TakeOver. I have had chants stuck in my head for days. Mm, so have I. So have I. 
Um, I, and to this point, I still don't know which one's Dawson and which one's Dash, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that in due time. So, obviously, guys, if you haven't obviously deduced it by now, myself and Matt and our friend Craig, who came with us, who got us the tickets, uh, we went to, we, we attended the show live. We weren't anywhere close to the front row, but we had decent enough seats. It, seats that, the way that the Wembley's done up is like basically you've got like, oh, how am I going to explain this now, Matt? Um, I don't think there's any real bad seats in the SSE. I think people. there is. Uh, for what the, what it was. Basically, what they've got is they've got like, if you can imagine bleachers, but obviously they're arena seats. They've done like one side, but they've done all the way to the end. And rather than curving around, they just basically plant one in the middle facing the stage. That's what myself and Matt were on. So we got a good view of the of the ring but if you're on either side and you're right to the further back you're always going to be sitting with your with your oh, side sat awkwardly yeah. yeah you're always going to be looking to your left or looking to your right to get a good view of anything that's going on it doesn't the way that if you were to look dead on you wouldn't see anything that's going on so you've got to constantly be moving so i'm glad we weren't in those particular seats we had good seats i liked our seats not many people in front of us so many if we only had like one row in front of us so on our particular row yeah <clears throat> and I know that um, uh, I went back and watched it through. You can't really see us. You can't. There's no good view of where we were because a lot of the stuff when you're watching the show on the network, that area is kind of blacked out because they want to make it, they want the illusion that it goes on forever, sort of thing. And they do this on Raw each week as well. I think I, I think I saw us. I think I saw our shirts. Yeah, I think you saw our white shirts. But I mean, come on, you wouldn't even know where they. You know, like without fucking magnifying glass and high def, I, I doubt you'd be able to see much, but still. Um, but still, I thought our seats were pretty good. We got to watch everything, and we got to. I think also we were in one of the more vocal pockets of the. There was like about ten different areas of the arena where um, chants were originating, and I think we were like in the middle of one of them. So um, when one group had their chant finished, it seemed like it went to another group, and then it went to another group, and, then it just <laughs> and it's your turn. Yeah. And then everyone joins in with whatever wants to go on. So it's pretty much how it went. Uh, is there anything we need to talk about? Oh, yeah. So before we actually get into the show, I want to talk about merchandising for a little bit. And a few stories of the event. So obviously they had a TNA advert outside the SSE because the, <laughs> the, the yeah. Wembley Arena is actually housing a TNA event very soon. Um, with Kurt Angle, which is like its farewell tour or something. Even though things that he said recently doesn't really make it seem like he really is saying farewell, but still. Um, so that was funny. A few people took pictures of that. But, I mean, WWE what, can't really change that. It's down to the arena, really. So I'm sure they weren't happy about it, but they can't really do much. Um, so talking of merchandise, Matt obviously got himself a hat, put, 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 put a picture of it on the, the Twitter account. Is that right? Is that what you put up on? I did, yes. You did. NXT hat uh, because they didn't have any. Um, well, they didn't have uh, any of your size. Of the, I don't know if they didn't have any of my size in anything, but I know they definitely didn't have it in the dedicated tour shirt. Yeah, so there is that. The tour shirts, by the way, were very nice. I like them. It was only fifty p more for me to get it on, like the web. On the on the you know through their web page, which is a bit <laughs> which is a bit poor. They should do it cheaper, live, but. Um, there was a kid next to us that clearly it was his Christmas present to get a replica NXT championship belt. And he got one. And as soon as he got it, he said to his dad, can we go home now? Which which caused fucking fits of laughter from the three of us, which I thought was quite funny. And um, But the idea of this dad just literally forking over 350 quid, or 400, sorry, because he got a few shirts as well, didn't he? Yeah. Um, just did one go, and we're like, whoa, jeez. But... Um, Obviously, that kid also he's quite quite a happy little camper with his NXT championship. One thing I was shocked about, though, Matt, everyone knows here on this show, I've got two little girls. I wanted to get them both Bailey shirts. Who in their own right mind decided it wouldn't be a good idea to put fucking kid size Bailey shirts on the merchandise stand? Should be shot on sight. Now, I don't know how. Bad man. I, I don't know who, where the fuck you thought of that. And before anyone says, well, they don't normally sell kid shirts at these things. What are you talking about? Ah. Uh-uh. ah. There were kid shirts, but of the tour variety, not of the Bailey variety. So they were doing them. They decided just not to do them for Bailey. Yeah. What's that? Our biggest 
our biggest talent that results at all age. Yeah, it's basically like saying to you, why would we make shirts for little boys that are fans of John Cena? We won't make any fucking kids versions of John Cena shirts. We're not going to do that. I thought it was very stupid, and I was actually quite shocked. In fact, upon talking to it with um, with yourself and Craig, we were like, the more we thought about it, the less sense it made. It was like, they just didn't make sense. Why wouldn't they do it? Because I would have dropped money on it right there, Matt. You know, I was ready to. I had the money yeah. in my hand. But, as the case may be, they didn't do it. So, yeah, again, they missed out a little bit there. I also thought, Matt, that some of their array of merchandise available there was a little bit lacking. They kind of focused on three or four people and really didn't give much love to, you know, Gable and Jordan didn't have anything. I know this NXT guy, so they probably only have one shirt max anyway, but I would expect it a little bit. You wanted a towel. I wanted a a ready winning Gable towel. If they had those towels there, Matt, and they sold them for tenner, there would be fucking tons of those towels in the crowd. But they yeah. everyone would have one. So I don't know why they're not doing them. And they should look at it a little bit more. Because especially at a big show like that, they would have sold a lot more, I'm sure, with a little bit more diversity. But but still. Uh, any other stories of outside the show that we could share? Before we get into the actual no. review? No. Um, apart we, from we, the... we, me- we mentioned the crazy lady. Like, do you have the network? Well, oh, yeah. yeah. There was also um, you know, people mucking around with their championship titles, that sort of thing that you have on the outside um, and that sort of thing. And uh, just a lot of very excited guys outside, obviously, and uh, guys and gals. Uh, mostly guys, though, let's just be honest. But, very, very heavy Yeah. in that sort of ratio. <laughs> That's it. Um, so, yeah, let's get into the show then. Uh, if we think of any other stories, we can just bring them up as we go along. So, the first match on the night uh, was the tag team match that's going to air next week, which was Gable and Jordan, Ford Villains, Hype Bros, and Blake and Murphy. And I'm not joking here. I'm really not down, downplaying this or over, sorry, I'm not over exaggerating when I say that, I, that Enzo and Cass, they got one hell of a reception later on on the actual show. I'm pretty sure that Gable and Jordan got a better response when they came Oh, out. yes. Like, everyone were huge into these guys. I mean, I honestly think they got the biggest pop of the night. Funny enough, and it wasn't on the main show, which I thought was quite funny. And what was quite funny then is that it seemed like everyone in England has the exact same thoughts of Mojo Rawley as we do here on the show, which is... We don't fucking like him. Like, we just don't like yeah. him. It's like, yeah. we're not alone in our belief. Yeah. It's just like the moment their music came up, just like, boo. I, I will say that there was one solitary fan that was trying to get Mojo Rawley chants going, and he wasn't getting very far yeah. in doing so. So, um, yeah, Hype Bros not exactly liked that much. Blake and Murphy very much disliked. Alexa Bliss got a, got a hell of a cheer, so there is that. <laughs> true yeah she's got, <laughs> got no problem with alexa bliss but the dubstep she, twins yeah like yeah. making their way to the ring accompanied by alexa bliss yay yeah. like a murphy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um i tell you what Matt, i think this seemed like a good match there was plenty of gable in there lots of gable when jordan comes in one of the biggest things in jordan, nxt right now jordan, jordan. yeah that's it is the jordan hot tag when he goes in there and he goes suplex mental it is a lot of fun to watch and it was live as well i'm sure when that when the episode comes out next week you'll see what i mean when you just fucking anyone that gets into the ring especially when you've got six people to suplex he's just got literally one person comes to the ring he suplexes them he suplexed someone over the top rope so that was fun that was a lot of fun but um jordan when he comes in in with with a with a you know, head of steam, and he's just fucking suplexing everyone. It's it's fun. It's really good to watch. In fact, he got his own suplex city chant. So there is that. Yeah. I'm sure, Brock Lesnar would be happy with that. Um, it seemed like a good match. I don't. We won't know how it came over on television, obviously, until it comes out next week. But yeah, I mean, that's the one thing I noticed watching a couple of the matches for the actual takeover event, mm-hmm. where it's just sort of like, oh. Like, just the way it comes across. Yeah, on on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. Um, but I'm sure that the Gable Jordan chants, which were plentiful, um, and obviously in the Elias Sampson Bull Dempsey match, which was afterwards, the Meet We oh, Miss Gable chants will, will be quite yeah. evident. 
throughout throughout that as well. Um, so we may as well move on to that as well. So Elias Sampson making his re-debut. I say re-debut because he had a match at Brooklyn, I think. If it wasn't, it was at the last show, respect. But he went against Bull Dempsey. His chant, instead of being bull fit, was bullshit. So, yeah, there you are. Um, Matt, we give our thoughts on Elias Sampson. He didn't get much of a reaction from the UK crowd, which... Um, I'm not going to blame him for yet, because it's like we kind of didn't know what to make of the guy, right? Was it kind of the same way as, as you're thinking? Like, don't really know what he's about, don't know enough about him. Well, if you say he's wrestled before, I, I don't recognise him. I'm uh, he, at, he has, he's, he's I'm looking at pictures of him now, and I'm like, I, 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 I don't recognise him. Yeah. Um, he hasn't had a match in a long time, because they've been building up this gimmick for him, but... Uh, in terms of in-ring work, I thought it was fine. This this match was the the most dead of the entire night, without question. Just people didn't really care, if I'm honest. And it didn't last very long either. I, I When I look at this guy, I like his look. I like the idea of the gimmick. But Matt, I don't know how well this gimmick is going to get a reaction from the crowd. Um, no. So... It, it struggled. Yeah, a it, lot. <laughs> I think he's going to struggle to make this work. I'm sure it can work. I think it's going to be... Any one with, like, the most sort of basic elbow drop. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm honest. Uh, so, yeah, he does win there, that match. And, obviously, he's going to have a lot more matches on NXT going forward. They are apparently, like, recording a fucking shit ton of episodes back to back, which I'm a little bit worried about because that's sort of TNA-esque, right, when they do... I know they, all, they the NXT does that. They record a bunch of episodes back to back. But they're doing a load, so they're doing like a big batch recording, so they can go tour in the early uh, months of next year. Yeah. Not entirely sure. I mean, the crowds in in full sale are probably going to feel that a lot worse. You know, the crowd's probably going to be exhausted for a portion of that. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So this actually that was the the last section of that. We get told that the show is about to start, and I tell you what's weird about this map. When it comes back on and Triple H is, is in the ring and he does his thing, which was really cool when he's uh, getting all hyped up and he says, I know I got my ass kicked on Sunday, but nothing was going to stop me being here. I wasn't yeah. too bothered about him being there. Um, None at all. Not really. But when you watch it back on TV, it says recorded earlier tonight. But it actually wasn't. In according to where this happened for us seeing it live, maybe I've got this wrong. But it was done in exactly the order that you saw on TV. Hmm. You saw his promo. It went to have the promo of what the show's about. And then it went to the first match. That's what we saw live in the building. Yeah. So, I don't know why they did earlier tonight. where that's uh, Implying that that wasn't live. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh... maybe... maybe Someone can fill me in, something there. I don't know, but help. Maybe they're trying to get over that. You know, they did it earlier on, so you can get back to. I don't. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know. But this leads into the first match: Asuka versus Emma. And uh, this was a fun, fun match. I have to say, I was a little bit shocked that this would be the match that starts off the show, but with the match that they had. In retrospect, it was a fine, good. It was a bloody good choice to have it start after. Oh yeah, I think it was. Um, it, it was a good pick, and it's the most offense we've seen as could take ever in her time in NXT. This was an even match for all intents and purposes. Emma had a lot of f- offense in on this match. She had her. She she gave her licks as much as she took them. Is, is would you agree with that? Oh yeah, I thought it was a great little match, and it, yeah, it was very evenly paced. Um, there was a lot of times where it was like, hang on a second, my prediction may be slightly wrong. Yeah. 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 There's a few moments where you thought, well, maybe they might just give Emma this this match and go forward with the rivalry. But, uh, but still, I, I tell you what I was quite happy about throughout the course of this show in terms of being part of that crowd is how, yeah, we all love Emma, but she's a heel. So we booed her like a heel, right? Yeah. Asuka, she's the face. So we cheered her like she was a face. One of the best things about the entire show in a fall, we, you did not hear one single We Are Awesome chant because it's supposed to be about who's in the ring, right? That's why all the chants were about people in the ring. That's what I liked about what, what, that, what the crowd were, what we did. So 
I thought that this set a precedence of the crowd not being super smarky in the sense of, oh, we'll cheer for Emma because we like Emma even though she's supposed so to be heel. We love ourselves, yeah. yeah. It's like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll boo the heels because that's what they are and we'll clap for them for a good performance that they do afterwards. That's, that's, what, that's what we do. That's what we do, right? Um, so... I thought it was a great match to get everyone warmed up. I thought you had some good wrestling here. It was nice and crisp. I know Asuka has this thing where she looks like she's very free form. She's always moving. That it's not as um, stiff as maybe you'd expect a Japanese wrestler to be. She's still stiff. It's just her movements are a bit free flowy. But by no means does that. It makes the illusion that the match itself is a little bit sloppy, but it isn't. The moves are still on no. point. Um, so she knocks out Emma here with a kick. After they try and cheat her out, there was actually a good spot here where they did the the reverse Eddie Guerrero, where uh, Emma acted as if she was knocked down with um, Asuka holding. I don't know what they actually had. It was like a belt, wasn't it, or something like that. And then the referee was like, oh, "Did you do this? This leads to a close call where Emma uses the most devastating yeah. finishing move in wrestling history." But on NXT, that power, that 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 move holds no power. It just doesn't do the trick. So. Emma was able to kick out. Oh, sorry. Asuka was able to kick out. And, um, yeah, Asuka eventually gets the win with that kick. I thought it was a fine opener, Matt. I thought that... Um... Oh, solid. And it, the thing is, I quite like it. It was... It definitely um, woke it up to sort of like, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, the crowd are already into it. All the wrestlers had to do was perform good and we would have accepted it they performed great and we yeah you give a little bit of love you get some back that's the way that that crowd was going to work that's it um there was a there was a lot of um fuck her up saska fuck her, um fuck her up Asuka, fuck her up yeah as a crowd we certainly um we crude we were we weren't afraid to use our um our full vocabulary vocabulary shall we say <laughs> um, in that sense. yeah yeah or the referee is a wanker when he um, thought when he looked like he was going to DQ Asuka. Or so. when he got in the way. Yeah, that's it. Uh, this leads into the tag team championship match: Enzo and Cass versus Dash and Dawson. Now, uh, we got the so much chanting. Very much, lots, lots, lots. So um, I'm glad that we got the usual Enzo and Cass promo before the match because I actually think considering they lost it ultimately i'm sure it will play a part in their story going forward whether or not they should continue being that way right i don't know Mm -hmm. but jesus was it a lot of fun to um to be doing all that and obviously the fans were huge into it um cat or sorry enzo with his zero pounds for the amount of times he's been knocked down and didn't get back up so yeah that was quite fun i tell you what though what one thing that's going to work to cass's advantage big cass is that when he looks like he's when he looks like he wants to rip someone apart, he does, man, he looks fucking scary, right? I will say that. Oh before, yeah, you know. So there is that. Um, yeah, lots of chanting here, lots of it for a en- lot of love for Enzo Amore. A Beatles chant for a big cast, which I thought I'd never hear. I'm not going to take credit for that, but it was fucking awesome. Was um... it was like as we were leaving, it's like I woke up this morning never thinking I'd be singing Beatles at yeah. Big Cat. Yeah, Big Cat. It's just you don't see, you don't expect it to happen, but that's the magic of the place, right? It just happens sometimes. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of chants here. For the one chant that actually cracked me up was which one's Dawson, which one's Dash, and there was a lot of chants in regards to that. Um, and I have to admit, I still have trouble reminding which one's which, because normally I just look at it, one of them's handlebar moustache, and the other one isn't, so yeah. um, that's the way I kind of look at it at the moment. Maybe, uh, and to be honest, that's kind of their fault, because they haven't, uh, they've been trying to establish themselves as a team so much, they haven't tried to establish themselves as, as individuals in the same breath, so, but that's fine, I'm not going to knock them for that. Um, so they, uh, they beat Enzo and Cass here in this. I thought it was a good match. They played with the crowd's emotions quite a lot here, um, especially with like the air Enzo and then uh, him getting dragged out of the ring and sort of that played yeah. into the finish. I mean, if people are on their feet, they were ready to cheer for this victory, and then it got snatched out from under them. So fair play. And then Dash and Dawson eventually get the win with the top rope. I don't know what their finisher is called, but you must have seen it. It's kind of like a code breaker sort of thing. Um, it's probably the best way to call it, isn't it? Like, is there any other way you could explain it better? I swear, what do they call it? 
Like, <laughs> I, isn't it like the pain machine or something? I don't know. I don't know. But, um, but essentially, that's what it is. It's basically like a flapjack into a code breaker, except this time it was done off the top rope. So it looked dirty, and it was dirty. So that um, made the champions retain their champion uh, championships. Sorry, I get my, my tongue tied there. And um, after this, uh, I mean, it was unpredictable result. I was sure that Enzo and Castle walking out with the championship. It was almost like, yeah, it's like now or never. Like if they if they're not going to win the titles now, really, there's no point in them sticking around at NXT because like, that ship has kind of sailed now, right? Um, but I thought it was a good enough match. Um, I, I I don't know. It, it, I, I get the feeling sometimes with Cass and Enzo that their quality and their popularity often plays against them when it comes to them winning matches like these. That it's, it's kind of it's kind of really like a bad thing to say when you think um, they're over popular. Yeah, kind of right. Like you look at Dash and Dawson, they're winning these matches and the championships because they they kind of need it and they need it to solidify themselves as ass kickers in that sense. And they are getting there. Enzo and Cass never really needed that, right? They they kind of got by on their own. So they're looking at them like, oh, they're almost like they're looking at them like, well, you're above the titles at the moment. When actually, you look at these these guys' work, especially the video package of how long they've been together. It's like, yeah. They were the... Uh, especially you, considering you think to yourself, like, I don't even remember, like, when Enzo looked that way. Yeah, right? It, to me, it's like, it's been so long. That was before his injury, wasn't it? That's before yeah. his leg, so... Um, so yeah, it's, um, I'm sure that, listen, if they're going to keep them on NXT, there's nothing else for them to do. If they were going to win the titles, it was this match. This was the moment. It didn't happen. It's main roster time. That's really the only, yeah, as much as I'd love to see them on NXT and I, and I kind of want to hog them on here. It's a little bit like they've done, they've done everything. They just, they, there's nothing left for them to do. I mean, if they were going to win the titles, They've left it too late now to me. So for that big moment, so yeah. But still, Enzo and Cass will uh, probably remember this night for all the good reasons of when they got um, not just one, but about five different chants for their Shit. team going on. We we we, li- we liked the variety for them. So that's right, so. it. This leads into Apollo Cruz versus Baron Corbin. Now, Matt, I found the best way to describe this match when I was talking to you, and I'll explain it in the same way. Okay. Be, being there live, it felt like Corbin was far more over as a heel than Cruz was as a face. Yes. That's probably the best way I can explain what this match was. And I'm very impressed with the work that Corbin has done. He's a far cry from the guy we said before we thought was only capable of having these one or two minute matches because he wasn't good enough. Man, he's he proved us wrong for that. Fair play. Awesome. True. But Matt, there's just something missing from Cruz at the moment. Something's not quite right with the guy. Something's not quite working. I expected yeah. him to get a lot more warmer of a reception than he ultimately got. Are you are you are you under the same sort of thought? I'm of this yeah, I can agree with that completely. Like Um it's it's bizarre. Like this is the London crowd, die hard London crowd, right? I mean, I know we could be tough, but... We could be tough, but we're willing to give, you know, especially if you're a face, and let's face it, right, everyone likes Apollo Crews, but there just wasn't something there that made us want to cheer him like a Bailey or a Finn Balor or an Enzo and Cass. It just... Yeah. It just, it didn't, it didn't work, right? So there, there's something's got to change there. I don't think, though, that either himself, neither, sorry, himself or NXT knows how to fix currently what's going on with him. I don't. I get the feeling they they didn't expect this missing thing to be a to be something that's going on, and now mm-hmm. it is. I don't think they currently know how to amend that. But and neither do I for for reference. But um, something's just not quite right. Something's not quite there. I can't honestly think of anything for it. Yeah, maybe it's going to take a little bit more time. Maybe um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just the night. <laughs> Um, but I don't know. Maybe it was just us. Maybe it was just us. I don't know, but still. 
But I will say though, Matt, regardless of that, I think Corbin is making great strides, and I um I thought this match was his coming out party, is saying, you know what, I'm Big Daddy Heel on the NXT roster. Fuck you all. I don't care if you say I'm shit. And that I should. That and I, we did a lot. And we did a lot. If you look at it in that sense, he got the perfect heel response that you would expect from a crowd like that, right? He, yeah. And the fact is, afterwards, that I, I can only say for myself, when he was standing there celebrating, celebrating his victory after all the shit, all the shit that we that we piled on this guy, charting, which he should get by the way, because because he, he's a heel, we mm-hmm. clapped his performance afterwards. We felt like this this guy kind of solidified himself here. He's um, he walked into this hostile environment and he made it his own right yeah he stole the show away from the face that's what he did so fair play to him fair play to him awesome i uh, sort of stormed on in it's like my neck of the woods now yeah i mean if you look on the landscape of nxt he's probably gonna get himself a title shot soon and there's a good chance he might just walk out with that, with that belt they might yeah. think why not let's give it to what other heel can we give it to at the moment that we would make sense to like joe's lost you know, um, if you were going to give him the championship, it would be at, at, in his match with Balor. Corbin hasn't had his match yet, so maybe it's his time to carry the torch and be the next big villain that a face rises up and beats. Yeah. Maybe that's the case. And if that is the case, I think Corbin has a lot of the tools he will need to be that guy. So, fair play to him. But, um, that's it. It's like a lot of people, like, we gave him a lot of grief, but yeah, he's solid. I will say though, Matt, in terms of matches, I think this one will be overshadowed because just simply because there was more anticipated matches around it. That's the it only. It wasn't reason. the best match, was it? I thought it was a good match. I thought it was alright, but it's along the lines of like if you look at the matches around it, you've got Enzo and Cash, Dasha Dawson, Asuka, Emma, Bailey, Nia Jax, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe. To me, I said this when when going in, this is my least. Ex- this is the match I'm least exci- excited. Yeah. for. So that's why it kind of gets overshadowed a bit, but it's it's still fine. This leads into Bailey versus Nia Jax for the NXT Women's Championship. Now, Matt, earlier on in this podcast, I said that Roman Reigns is showing that he's got a little bit of versatility, right? He's been able to have um, a lot of uh, good matches recently, right? Yeah. In, in in different settings, different environments, different storylines. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about versatility, though, you, you, there's only one other person that comes immediately to mind when, in, in that same sort of breath, and that to completely over, overblows Reigns in, in that factor, and that's Bailey. Oh, yeah. Bailey's got that, that feature, that Bret Hart feature of having great matches with people of all different shapes and sizes and skill sets. Yeah. She can wrestle with fantastic wrestlers. She can wrestle with shit wrestlers. She can wrestle with big wrestlers. She can wrestle with small wrestlers. She can wrestle with any anyone and have, at very, very least, a good match. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I still stand, like, I said it in the crowd, and I was like, no, Jax is making Bailey look bad. Yes, but the way that it finished, it seemed like Bailey found a way, a champion's oh, yeah. way of overcoming... The odds, right? The the monster. Yeah. Thing. In the end, it looked like Nia Jax had slipped up. She had, she had, um, you know, that Bailey had outfought her. You know, out techniqued yeah. her with the with the submission. That's how I looked at it, right? Um, that she kept walking into the submission. She didn't, she didn't step back and attack from a different angle. She kept trying to pick up Bailey, and Bailey was like, oh, "If you keep doing it, I'm going to keep locking you in this guillotine. I'm more than happy to do that, right?" Yeah, and her and Nia Jax's, Yeah, it was Nia Jax's inexperience, not knowing how to other ways apart from her strength on how to get out of that move. She just didn't know yeah. how. So that's one way that they could they could get around it. But Matt, she elevated uh, Bailey, did Nia Jax to the best match Nia Jax has had so far in her career. Yeah, easily. Yeah. So, and the UK fans, including myself and Matt, we're all smitten with Bailey. We're asking her constantly to be our girl, so. There is that. By the way, those chants came over so well on camera. Oh my goodness! And the and the stand. It was the, it was the tweet, and I was like, "Bless." Yeah, which, which she said she would be. When she was like, "Yes, I will be your girl." I was like, yeah. Yay! <laughs> um, the moment where she made ten thousand and seventy odd people very very happy. That's it. Um, but it was kind of difficult though. You could see it. 
we're just sort of like, oh, this is meant to be a devast- like, oh, this is meant to be such a terrible challenge, but I can't help but smile. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? What I liked about it though, especially with the crowd, it really bought into kind of the story of the match where the crowd are trying to will her through the match. When you had the stand up, if you love Bailey chant, and everyone. Oh up. yes. The worst part is I'd completely forgotten about that chant until I re- sort of read something else on. Yeah. Like just flicking through like the hashtag NXT London sort of tweets, and I was like, I completely forgot about stand up. If you yeah. love Bailey. Yeah. And that was awesome because when you watch that back, they did the thing where they zoom out the camera a little bit and you've got everyone stood up. It was brilliant. Good camera work there. Um, so that was um, good stuff. And um, it really added to the match. In terms of um, of the match, people may look at this and say, well, this is kind of a mediocre match. But I thought it was a fine title match. People look at it there because the... Listen, like, Bailey had two phenomenal matches that she more than likely won't ever, ever top in her entire career with Sasha Banks. By no means should we rate other matches lower just because they're in comparison to them. Like, this this match was still good in its own right, and it was a different sort of match. I enjoyed yeah. it watching it back. So, And I, guys, I know I might be biased because I went there, but this is just what I, what I believe. Um, I'd be interested to see people that didn't go there and watched it, what their thoughts were, because, you know, I, I did go there. I, I am biased towards it. Um, How can I not be? Exactly. Well, for for twenty or so minutes, all of the uh, the people in the ring were all five year olds cheering on Bailey, and um, it felt good to be transferred to that time, and, including the two wacky waving of late long lady two men. Yes, in the crowd, which were amazing, and they should be commended for that. that, was, that was oh awesome. yes, so great stuff. I thought it was a good match, and I think it was a match that wasn't so much for Nia Jax. It was to solidify Bailey as being this champion. That's going to be fucking hard to beat, no matter who you are, right? It's going to yeah. be you're going to have to really put on a match of the year performance to to beat Bailey. She's become a versatile, well-rounded champion, and that's yeah. her character. Right? And if it ca- and I'm thinking it's going to end up being Bailey Asuka, and I'm more than happy for that. Yeah, and if that's the match that hands things off to Asuka, and then Bailey goes up, maybe I don't know whether that's the plan, but. You know what? That's okay. So be it. So be it. Sure. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. This leads to the main event. Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe. And um, what I found a lot recently, especially in the last two events, Brooklyn and Rival, is that you've had Finn Balor as the champion being overshadowed by the women on the show. Let's just be mm-hmm. honest. That, that has happened, right? The last two big events... His matches have been overshadowed by the women stealing the show. True. Now, by no means am I going to say here that Finn Balor stole it back. He still had a match that was good, but I think it was more along the lines of this match seemed a lot more of a main event than possibly what he had at Brooklyn. Because once you had Sasha Banks and Bailey, nothing was going to top that that night. Whereas this, yeah. the match he had with Samoa Joe stood up to the rest of them on the card. It was probably the, the technically the most superior to the rest of them. Um, perhaps it probably was. Um, I'd, I'd bet a lot on that, actually. So I thought this match was very good. Uh, I thought that Finn Balor coming out with his Jack the Ripper-inspired gear and his ink with the um, the Big Ben and the, the gargoyle on his back sort of thing was really cool. The one thing I love is I saw something on oh, Facebook. Let me see if I can find it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was sort of just like something about it. Oh, it's Chim Chimney, Chim Chimney, Chim Chim Chiru, Satanic Mary Poppins is coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's so good. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's either that or you could be a very evil Sherlock Holmes, you know. So, you know. But yeah. I completely, I just realised you say about Sherlock Holmes, that's completely overlooking the fact that that's how um, the Vaud villains were dressed. Oh, really? I don't know. When they I... came out with the capes and the hats and that lot. I think they did something similar on an event they already did, though, didn't they? I don't know. We'll, we'll see it better next week anyway when it's on, on the yeah. NXT. Um, but... but his entrance was great. Yeah, it was good. It was I, was, good. I had the suspicion, actually, before the event, before TakeOver, and I was sort of like, what if that's... What if Bala is Jack the Ripper? And they did it, and I'm like, I'm so happy. Yeah. Because I always wondered, that was a bit random that they were doing this thing with Jack the Ripper for being part of the advertisements. I was like, what What are they doing with this? And I never made the assumption. Maybe I should have. Maybe I was just too excited for the show that I didn't put two and two together. But yeah, I thought that was a really cool way to yeah. do it. Um, um, and his paint, obviously, was awesome. 
people uh, say a little bit that he should change it up a little bit more. But you actually look on his face, he has been putting a lot more colour in some of the ink on his face. is isn't completely black this time. So... I don't think he should change it up, but then it's always different. Yeah, you're always excited, you're always excited to see what he's going to put on there. So I think it's okay. I think it's alright for now. Um, so while the match was slow to begin with, they ramped it up towards the, uh, the middle and the end of the match. Some good reversals here. And, uh, Just the... Joe monstering it. Yeah, that's it. Including Joe, as you say there, jumping out of the ring with um, with a dive. And the sight of a 300-pound angry Samoan Joe flying at full pace outside of the ring would be enough to make me cack my pants. Like. Do you mean Somoa? A Somoa, Joe, yeah. Somoa. Yeah, that, that typo. Um, Moron. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was... Um, I thought like the ending in this match was good because they were reversing each other's big moves because they know yes. each other so well, right? Ten years of friendship, they were building that up. Balor was trying to use his kicks, he was getting blocked, trying to use his drop kick into the corner, that was getting blocked. Even Joe was trying to use some of his moves, like his muscle buster, that was getting reversed. Oh, his reversal out of the choke. Yes, that was brilliant, that was very well done. And the crowd response, they had the crowd with them at that point, the crowd were on board ready to go wherever they wanted to take us we were on board at that point yeah um we're going on an adventure okay yeah we're going for it yeah okay we're on board let's do this and the match ends with uh bala reversing like um oh, how's it in there it kind of like reverse oh. it was, it's almost like joe was going for a top rope muscle muscle buster yeah, and then he gets knocked down. But what I'm saying before then, it looked like Joe was like, he was ready to go full like anger. He was going mental. Oh, right? He full, roared out the corner. Yeah, full on angry Samoan. Yeah, and then like Bala managed to duck under and then kick him into the corner, that sort of stuff. But yeah, as you say there, Matt, like, I, I thought the way they did it here was, was pretty cool because once Bala had knocked him off the top rope, he man, he didn't wait. He didn't close to the crowd. He went, you know what? I need to finish this match right now. And he went straight for the coup de grace and then finished it off and retained the title, which is... Um, I thought Joe would have a good chance of winning the belt here, but clearly they want it to... Well, I think we predicted that way. We did, yeah, which we were wrong. Um, Bala walks out with the title. They, a doctor came out to check on him, so I hope he's not harbouring a knock or an injury. But it would seem yeah, weird true. that he was out there, because they didn't even play up that he was getting that much destroyed by Samoa Joe. It was an even yeah. match, right? Um so that was good. Um, I actually liked some of the, even the mannerisms that Bala was doing here when the referee was telling him off and for not getting back into the ring or, or don't dive outside the ring as soon as the referee goes away, like as the demon kind of just slinkers outside. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. I won't. Yeah. Much. Yeah, much, yeah. You know, so. He, he, it's almost a little bit like Joe, he, he acts all gentlemanly when he's, Oh, sorry, Finn Balor, sorry. He acts all gentlemanly when he's wrestling that. But when he's the demon, he's he's almost like a little bit mischievous. I like that. Yeah. I like that a little bit. So It adds that little next stage. So, otherwise, it's just sort of like, it's just him in pain. It's yeah. Like, well, no, actually, because he wrestles like... It's kind of like... Oh, His mannerisms are different. To compare him to ta- ma- Taker at Mania. Okay. Taker won't always perform his dive over the rope. Yeah. But he, he will at Mania. But he will at Mania. Yeah. He doesn't always go old school. But he does. But he does at Mania. I, I, I get what you mean. Um, but, I mean, it, even different to that, like, even like he's like even the way, like, he'll do a move and then he'll look at the crowd differently to the way he will do as Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I quite liked, like, the proper power. Oh, what bit was it? We're just randomly... I can't remember what it was of as a result of. But it's just something that just all of a sudden he was just sort of like as up as quick as anything. Oh, yeah, he was knocked down and Joe was getting up to the top rope and you're like, what the fuck is he going to do? And then literally, yeah, just demon mode just went into full effect and he kicked him full in the Full swing, he was like, yeah. no. Yeah, it was good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. So, yeah, a great, a great main event. I thought it was great uh, icing on the top of the cake. I don't think any particular one match stole the show. I will say that. I didn't think any of them were like uber, uber, hugely will be remembered for the rest of their life. But the entire show was solid. It was good. Yes. And um, I think that each of these guys were very much enjoying the atmosphere that they were being in. It's much the same they were doing in Brooklyn. But I think maybe um, Bala and Joe 
I think they enjoyed this match a lot more than Balor did against Owens at Brooklyn. I will say that because it was almost like that match was overshadowed so much. Not so much here. This this was this this felt like the main event, and it was. Right? Yes, it, it was right. Uh, there was one other match after this ended. After everyone else tried to leave. Yes, yeah, so everyone tried to like basically get out of their seats and get to their. Um, I said to both to, to to you, man, to Craig that was there, that as soon as I know, I we I knew what was happening. They weren't going to have a match without Sami Zayn. They had been advertising it. He had already been wrestling matches beforehand. Yep. So I knew he was doing it. They just probably ran out of time before the show, or they always wanted to do it afterwards. So with all these people leaving, a few other people like ourselves, you know, I say the majority like ourselves were on the money. We knew what was going to happen. We weren't. We were going to stick around until the lights went up, and there was absolutely no idea of another match going on. But a lot of people did leave, and as soon as Sami Zayn's music hit back on, you could see it people... wasn't even that, especially when they were sort of like because Dillinger came out first. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just the, when they had the announcement, it was like, and now we have a final match. And everyone was just like, huh? Yeah, you could see people running, Run. like, sprinting back into I'm going to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, which obviously was Ty Dillinger against Sami Zayn. Zayn, by the way, was taking um, a lot of, um, like, he was basically taking a lot of bumps that would normally hurt his shoulder. He's basically proving to everyone that it's not an issue to him anymore. Yeah. Um, he sold the shoulder as being a possible, you know, easy target to to be attacked. But certainly to me, it looked like um, like he looks like he, he looks fully healed. He's taken the time and he's and he's more than more than willing to go. He cut a promo after winning the match. I mean, it is Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger, by the way, got lots of ten counts. But it was only when he was out there that everyone started calling him a top knot wanker. So. The one thing I loved is the fact that it was throughout the entirety of the night, yeah. which was just when the refs just like, two, and everyone's like, three, yeah. <laughs> four, five. And the just, other thing that Just so laugh. they can just go, ten, ten, yeah. ten. <laughs> the other thing that made me laugh point was, in the night. was the, what would you call it, the um, the one fall thing, where they're all going, this match is scheduled for one fall, one <laughs> fall. Oh, <laughs> yeah. For some reason. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, but yeah, that was cool. And he, and he cut a nice promo where he was shocked at the fact that London was booing all these other English cities. But, um, but yeah, that was funny. <laughs> what about this place? No. What about that place? No. <laughs> there. <laughs> Is this no. some British heat I don't understand here? Which I thought was <laughs> quite funny. But uh, yeah, a nice little promo, and uh, he thanked everyone, and that was it. That was it. I don't know. I know that that promo was put up on WWE. dot com. But I don't know if that will air on NXT. I'm sure the match will, so there is that. And it did look like an alright match, if I'm honest. So that's fine. So that was the entire show. That I said, I, I thought it was a stellar night. Enjoyed it a lot. It's a night that I'm sure that fans and the talent won't forget for a long time. And um, yeah. as I said at the very beginning of the fan feedback, it's the sort of atmosphere that's uh, you won't get too often, you know, especially. Uh, Especially not at that scale with like 10,000 people. You know, it's, it's very hard to find su- such a collection of rabid fans in those numbers. So, Especially, it was it got infectious as well. It does, yeah. I'm sure that even some of the people there that didn't want to cheer that much, they felt the need to get behind everyone because it was, you know, it felt like everyone was, was behind it. Yeah. Right? Like there's, um, there's a YouTube channel that I watch and they were, they're UK based and they were at TakeOver and he's just like, hi there. Yeah, that's the Excuse reason why. Excuse the throat. <laughs> that's that's why we didn't do an episode straight after the show, like I previously thought of, because my voice that's was true. fucking done. Like it was, it was ripped up, and doing like an hour and a half of talking after that, nah, it, that didn't appeal. It, to it, me. it would have been wrecked. Yeah, it would have been wrecked. Plus the fact we got back, you know, and we wanted to go to sleep because it'd been a long day and all that. Lot, so. You say that, and then we sat up and watched Terry Tibbs talk to me. <laughs> we put we put no after we got back from from NXT. Yeah. What did we do? We watched NXT. Yeah, we, we watched a little bit, yeah, uh, because we're vain and we wanted to see how our voices came across, right? So that's, yeah. it. Uh, that's the show, there, Matt. Um, yeah, lots of reviews there for you guys. Uh, obviously, if you're going to watch any one of these shows, I don't it's think you can go wrong. Yeah, I would watch Takeover, but I don't think you can go wrong watching any of them. If I'm honest, it's a good week for WWE, really. Yeah. Um, considering a couple of weeks ago we said it was a bad week for them, no, this is this is all right. This is this is good. And um, 
If you guys did enjoy this episode, is there anything else that you want to go for before I go plugging away? I do not. No. You do not, so do not. Remember what we said before, guys. If you, uh, you know, we're going to be doing that end of year meeting or the 2015 review meeting soon, which we are going to be doing live on on the channel. Um, very informal, like I said. Uh, we're not, you know, we might be taking breaks in the interim and stuff like that, and we're just allowing you into the conversation that we're going to be having about the channel. Uh, but as I said, if we wanted, um, like I said, we, we we would be more than happy to let like a representative of you guys come forward. So if you guys, if you're like over 18, you're mature, and um, you you know you feel like you could do that role well, and you want to speak to us di directly, and it's not stopping. Even if that is the case, we choose someone because it's live. You can still go on there, ask us questions, give your feedback, all that good stuff. So we, that, that is something that we're planning on doing soon. I don't, I'm not quite sure what the time will be. But we'll get it sorted out soon. But let us know if you're interested. If you did like this episode, though, you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Become one of our over 520 subscribers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's awesome to see. Uh, we're already 20 um, into our 1,000 that we, uh, we we wanted to get, you know. Because yeah, we we said 500 at the end of this year, which we got. And we're already 20 into our next target, Matt. So we're getting there. That's it. We're getting there. Um, if you uh, want to like the video, that would help us as well. If you want to ask us any questions, you can leave that in the comment section below. You can leave a tweet on, on our Twitter page, which is... Of at all Russell Pod. That is the one. And also you can interact with us via our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. That is all on the graphics section up there and also in the description below. Apart from that, guys, we'll be back normal next week after Christmas... And we all hope that you guys have a great Christmas time. Have a great time with your family. You have loads of sausages in bacon. Because that's what I'm mostly excited for. That shit is the fucking dealio. Right? That's awesome. <laughs> Going to be eating tons of that shit. Hope you get everything that you want for Christmas. And uh, hope you watch a fuck ton of movies. That will all make you feel all wholesome inside. <laughs> well. As long as it's Die Hard. Die Hard. For me it's Die Hard Matt and, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The old one. Not the new one. The old. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. It has to be. Has to be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It has to. Be. Um, what other Christmas movies are you gonna watch? Maybe Iron Man three. Good action movie set in Christmas time. Could be good. Well, no. It. If you if you want a Christmas time action film, then you've got Die Hard. Yeah, I'm talking. Of course, Matt. I'm gonna watch Die Hard, but I need more than one. Okay, I need more than one. Then you have Die Hard two. Oh, okay. All right, fair enough. Calm yourself down, Matt. Jesus, all right. Jesus, man. Yippee ki yay. Okay. Calm Motherfucker. down. Do all it. Right. <laughs> um, all the times that you and me have watched Die Hard 3 now, so there is that. And the other two, but just when that one came out. It wasn't even as good as one or two. I'm getting distracted here, but still. Yeah. Uh, or Die Hard with a Vengeance. Um, but still. I've only seen Die Hard 4. I haven't seen it yet. I heard it's Pat. For, no. Which one was the one with Hitman? Oh, wait. Is it... Die Hard, yeah, Die, Die, Die Hard 4.0, yeah, 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 you are right. So it's Die Hard 5, what is it, Live Long and Die Hard, the new one. A Good Day to one. Die Hard or something I don't like that. know, it's, I, don't it, know. I haven't watched it and I heard the shit, so. That's a clue. Anyway. anyway, talking of that, we should probably wrap up. <laughs> <Should> continue. <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> There's no more Christmas stuff you're going to be doing, any movies, any movies you might, you know, why, why uh, spot on your... Uh, on your uh, on your listings, you think you know what? Tony and Matt might fancy watching that. Give us a comment. We might we might even try and catch it. And um, we hope you guys have a great time. We'll catch you all next week. Thank you for supporting the show. And uh, we'll catch you all next week. We'll catch you soon. Thanks a lot. Now, bye bye. Bye.